going on, everyone? It is episode 205, recorded on Sunday, June 2nd, 2024. I'm Drew, and hey, John, I just found out my grandpa is now addicted to Viagra. Nobody's taking it harder than my grandma. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. everybody on tonight's episode we have a new monthly mayhem it's been around but we're gonna get you some updates and go through the details will the june nintendo direct bring some juice back into 2024 and we answer one audience question <laughs> John, <laughs> no pressure <laughs> no pressure one question um how how you how you doing buddy it's, it's summertime it's here um, how's here. the weather out in, in Colorado? Uh, it was pretty nice today. Um, I, I, I did a little mowing and, nice. uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. Uh, it hasn't gotten too hot. I, I work from home. There's lots of days I don't even leave the house. Mm. So I look forward to these are, uh, the worst three months of the year, June, July, August, mm -hmm. every year. I tell my wife, June 1st is the worst day of the year. And usually every year she forgets why I say that. OK, but it marks like the three months of summer to me. Yeah. And it ends with football starting and cooler sure. weather coming. And then eventually you get November 1st, which is the best day of the year. Historically, because Halloween is over, even though I don't mind Halloween as much anymore. Mm -hmm. But then the seasons begin like the season, the two months, November, December. I love it. But Wait, why do you hate the summer? It's, it's not that I hate the summer. I try to I don't like hot weather. And so I I don't like, especially when I was commuting, sitting okay. in a hot car, getting in your hot car at the end of the workday. I like cooler weather. So I look forward to September 1st. That's my favorite day of the year. Let's well, just be second. honest. Yeah. You just hate that the whole family's home now because the wife's not subbing. And I do too. Your kids aren't at school. You no longer have the house to sell. It's okay to admit that, John. That's the truth. I will admit it. <laughs> it is a little different this year. Both of my boys are working. Ooh. And they both work at the same place. It's a little cafe in okay. Kit Ridge. And uh, I wish they could work together so that my older son can just drive my younger yeah. son. But like, like my, that. my wife has been driving Sebastian to you know, back and forth, back and forth. Mm. Um, so there are times when they're just not home, which is nice. But yeah, okay. I, I love the days when I'm home alone. Um, mm. I'm already looking forward to that in September. I um, I saw Wakanda Forever finally last night. Okay. It took me forever to finally watch Wakanda <laughs> Forever. I think I was, I can't remember when it went on Disney Plus. I feel like it was like a year ago at least. Okay. But uh, I, I just, I, I was like, it, the my whole thought process is too sad. It's too sad to watch it. I, I, I It's just, a lot. I wanted to see it, but it was too sad. Yeah. And we finally watched it last night. And like, it was like up, man. You're just crying at the beginning of the movie. Um, well, I wasn't crying. You may have been. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I was sitting it, there. It's emotional. It's emotional. Tears streaming down my face. I swear my kids kept looking back at me like they know at this point. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't try to hide it. No, nope, and I, I respect that. Terribly sad. Probably the saddest moment in the MCU was just that opening. Um, yeah. Marvel, because they didn't show the Marvel animation until about Correct. five minutes in. And that just silent with, oh, my God, it was just awful. Um, and then the movie was. Movie was pretty good. It didn't feel very superhero y. If mm -hmm. That makes sense. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but, but like, there's a lot of you don't see the Black Panther till the end. That's that's true. And it's not a super powerful Black Panther. And and that's it. Like, and like they, they, they there's no other Marvel people in this one, although I don't think there were any Marvel characters in the first movie either. Um, but the first movie. I don't remember. It's been too yeah, long. Yeah, I, I don't think they had Marvel characters in the first movie. They do have, um, I don't know the character, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who I think has been in, um, I think she was in the Black Widow movie too. But like not like any of the superheroes. And that, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But my big issue with the movie was the first movie had so much levity 
Uh, Black Panther was funny. His sister was funny. Mm -hmm. uh, Michonne was funny. And this movie was so serious. The yeah, sister, who I think is the driving force, you know, in the first movie, she's like, what are those? You know, like all those lines. Yeah. It's just missing from this movie. And you miss the humor of Black Panther. It's just such more, so more serious. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it kind of like detracted from like my enjoyment from the first movie a bit. But I mean, yeah, it was, I like the way they handled it. And it was a good enough movie. It just, I, I didn't laugh that much. And that's kind of why I like the first Black Panther. I just found it like be a very funny movie. Okay. Um, With the happy medium. Yeah, it's hard to laugh when like, you know, such a beloved, you know, character is like mm -hmm. dies in real life. And, and the movie came out like two years after he died. So it's it wasn't that long. Yeah, they must have started filming it. I mean, they had to rewrite the whole movie. I know. Um, and they had to be filming it fairly quickly after that, because those movies do not take, you know, they take a yeah, long the, time the to post. do CGI and all. that. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, finally saw it. Yay. <laughs> I finished Fallout. Did you watch it yet? I did finish Fallout. Yeah, I loved it. Did you like it? It was OK. OK, I like I loved it. I, I think I, I fell asleep at the end of the first three episodes and I had to like rewatch the end. Yeah, one of those situations. Yeah. Not because it was bad, because mm -hmm. I was just tired. Um, they're long. Those first couple episodes are long. They're like oh, an hour and, like and a half. Hour and 15. Yeah, hour and, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was good. I've never played a Fallout game, so there's a lot of stuff Same. I just didn't pick up on and get the magic. Um, but it was done really well. Yeah, I Jonathan enjoyed Nolan. it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Chris Nolan fan. So, uh, you know, yeah. I didn't realize. Did I mention this? But I didn't realize Jonathan Nolan had done um, Westworld. OK. I And I watched like the first season of Westworld and I liked it. And then I just stopped watching it because I robots just, are human. You don't yeah. know who's a robot and who's I haven't it's watched. Like it. a, it's like a Disneyland of robots and you make your own story. Right. OK. And then it gets crazy. And I didn't realize Jonathan Nolan did it, but I was it watching it watch? very slowly. Hmm? You liked it? Is it good? I did like it, but I was watching it while I exercised. So it would take me like two and a half days to get through an episode. And I just uh -huh. eventually was just so slow. And now they took it. They killed it. They, it's not on Max anymore. They, they they did that thing where they killed it. Gotcha. So I have to buy the Blu-rays. And it's like, I don't want to. I want <laughs> to. Uh, wanna there's, like, there's nowhere to watch is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's only physical. Gotcha. They killed it and then like got a tax break. I hate it. I don't like when they do that stuff. Yeah, it's lame. But it was very good. Nice. What else is going on? I don't know. Just enjoying, enjoying life. <laughs> okay. Beautiful weather here lately. We've had here too, like high seventies, low eighties, nice and warm. Pool weather, out in the pool, doing the yard work, golfing, living the dream, John. Living the dream. <sighs> You reminding me, I mowed today mm. and I was um, mowing and I saw something moving in my grass and it was Ooh. a snake. Nice. A little just like what a garden snake. Or yeah, a little, yep. And it slithered up, up, up to like almost close to where my rocks begin. Mm -hmm. And then it stopped. And I was just sitting there with the mower running because I'm I'm I do not like snakes. And I was just waiting for it to just slither away, but it stopped. I mean, it you was not ch moving. You should have chased that sucker with the mower. And it, well, I started to move closer towards it, try to scare it off, and it would not move. And That's I was like, you oh, run it over. No. Did I run it over? And it just like tried to get away, but it was already mm -hmm. damaged, and then it just died. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere along the way, when I I did a couple circles, it it was gone. Mm. Um, not loving that. I did. I did get a. a, a good uh weed whack on a fraud the other day Ugh. you know it's listen i don't do it on purpose right how you fast just, are you running with it I'm, 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 listen chop 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 i got to get it done but uh you know you feel a little guilty but not really shouldn't you're have been not supposed there. to sprint while you're holding a weed whacker you're supposed to go slow like right? sure but sometimes you don't see it it happens Apparently, well, <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, you know what? I I hang out with Hambone tomorrow. We're in a golf tournament. We're gonna have a blast. We're gonna have some fun. Is it one uh, day or is it it's just days? one day? One day. He usually comes down the night before. He couldn't this year. That's okay. So we're just trying to uh, do an all day affair tomorrow. Ooh, an all day affair. Oh. All day affair. Oh. Oh, speaking of affairs, I started watching this. Not much. We've just finished up Fallout. We're looking. Um, we 
Amy and I started watching the Ashley Madison documentary. Uh, oh, really? Have you seen it? I think we uh, watched two episodes. I'm not sure I even heard of it. Where? What is it on? I think it's on Netflix. Okay. Well, you know I the whole. I don't have Netflix right now. You know that Ashley Madison, right? The website. Yeah. And, you know they had the big leech, right? They got hacked, mm-hmm. and they, yeah, it's all about that. Right. So it's got to be an awkward show to watch with your wife. No, I think, I think it's maybe it gets you going. Little cosplayer, so I don't fucking know. <laughs> Some creepy old dude. It's just like, hey, <laughs> Rudy Giuliani was sleeping with her. <laughs> it gets me going. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, John, what do we have coming up the next uh, couple of weeks? Because I'll tell you what, it's pretty dead on the Switch nowadays. It really is. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Star Wars Hunters comes out apparently. Yes. Finally? Yes. I don't after know. years. Listen, I'm going to be playing the shit out of this game. If anyone is listening to this and wants to play, let me know. I'm all in. I'm all in. I say that now. This game could suck, but I'm all in for now. Any any game on the Switch can suck at this point, honestly. Uh, this is can... um this is a Switch exclusive, right? Which is odd. Is it? That would that would be weird because isn't it like a free to play thing? Yeah, but why would you do free to play and then do that on one console? I I could be totally wrong. Yeah, Nintendo Switch exclusive. Oh no no that character is Switch exclusive. Ooh, actually, it's not even. Google Play. It's everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. I I I only see Switch on their page, but I guess it's mobile too. Yeah, maybe mobile and Switch. Interesting. That's that's weird because usually games like that you want to have on as many consoles as possible. You, you would think so because you need people playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nintendo Switch mobile. There was no console or PC version planned, which is a shame. Wow. Well, speaking of that, I think uh, PlayStation has its own little online kind of arena. Not really. I want to talk about it, John. Um, yeah. Uh, also, Tuesday, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've been fascinated to see this game in action. When we uh, were at Pat's East, they we were waiting for a game to play. And it was the, uh, the game that was like Vampire uh, Survivor. It was like the Capybara, whatever. You ever hear, you hear this game? Cop- no. What's that animal? Capybara, whatever the hell they are called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 you play as those, but it's Vampire Survivors, etc. Replica, but more okay. colorful and cartoon. They, they call those so, garlic garlic likes on. Uh, on that really is that is that now the official name? I think that's just on Game Scoop, but they call okay. them garlic likes. <laughs> Um, so we waited, we actually waited. That was the longest game we waited for whatever reason. We were like 30 minutes, but the booth right outside our line was the killer clown from out of space booth. So we were just mm-hmm. watching people play it for a half hour straight. It's interesting. It reminded me a lot of that, um, kind of like Friday the 13th type game. Yeah. There's but a there's, bunch of them now. Yeah. But now there's, it's clowns versus humans and you have objectives to do. And yeah, I tried okay. playing Friday the 13th some time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I it, I I, I didn't I remember that, long, but I have it. I actually still have it. I should try it. But you need that's all online only. It's or pretty much yeah, it's all online. Or anything, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like um, Friday the 13th was sort of following in the footsteps of like Dead by Daylight. And I think the difference in Killer Clowns is it's like there's three clowns versus like seven people. Correct. Yeah. So it's, not, it's not like you versus the world. It's like you know, a little more spread out. But Killer, yeah. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is, is just like the campiest freaking movie. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it just looks very interesting. And I've heard that it's pretty good, although it hits a point where it gets completely boring. But I, I could think, see that after 30 yeah. minutes of watching it, I was bored. Yeah, but I, I have heard that it's it's pretty entertaining for a while. So hmm. um, and then June 14th, Monster Hunter Stories, we get the uh, the switch version. That was originally on the 3DS. I yeah. have it on the 3DS. Refresh me. Is I'm, I'm sorry, I'm derailing. It's supposed to be rapid fire, but based on what I'm seeing below, we're going to make this conversational. Oh, we're uh, ra- we're rapid. We used to be rapid fire. We moved this uh, up so we can talk about it. Uh, is Obviously, I know Monster Hunter. I know this is very different than Monster Hunter. I mm-hmm. guess educate me again. I remember there was a trailer on this. Educate me, though, on this game. Is this something for me or no way? Probably not. 
Um, is it more RPG? It, like it is, it's an questing? RPG version of Monster Hunter. So the the v- various monsters from the Monster Hunter game are in it, um, but it is just an RPG. That's it. Like a classic RPG. I think the battle mechanics are sort of rock, paper, scissors as well. I've never gotten past, let's say, like three or four hours into the game. Okay, I was just looked up to see how long it is. Yeah, three the three DS version I've I've tried a couple times and then just stopped. Um, the Switch version I am intrigued with, but uh, yeah. And then remember they came out with Monster Hunter Stories two like a few years ago. And yeah, that I was the that. sequel to this game on three DS. But now they've ported this one over. Interestingly, this game is also coming to I know it's coming to PlayStation. And on June 14th, we're not only getting Monster Hunter Stories, but we're getting Monster Hunter Stories 2. So they're putting both of them out at the same time on the consoles Mm -hmm. that didn't have. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox, but um, so interesting that like some people will get both games at once. But interesting. Are you playing it all? uh, Maybe. Maybe. I love Mm -hmm. Monster Hunter. It's cool because you see the same like monsters and whatever. Um, The same items are in the game. It really kind of like. Okay carries over but the, the the whole game is just it's a different kind of game but you do the whole point is to get the, what they call them monsties the little okay. they look kind of like baby monsters because you're you're like a kid and it's almost like um i don't want to say it's like pokemon but you know you're supposed to like get your own monsty and then you go around and you explore and you fight other ones and then you grow and that sort of thing so sounds like that dragon quest game that i played what was it called um uh... Dragon Quest Monsters, maybe it was. Uh, there wasn't it Dragon, Dragon Quest. Was it played Treasure? I think. Oh, Treasure! Ah, yeah. That game was fantastic. I loved that game. Yeah, there is a Monsters. There is a. It wasn't. You're right. It was Dragon Quest Treasures or Treasure, yeah. one of the something like that. Yep. They all kind of trying to be like a Pokemon type sort of game. Yeah. So that comes out June fourteenth. And then also June 14th, Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. This is um this is like persona like persona games get like a a uh, couple years after they come out, they get sort of like a, a, f- a definitive edition. So Persona 5 had Persona 5 Royal and Persona 4, I think got Persona 4 Golden. Mm. This is the same thing because it's the same company making these games. And so Vengeance is sort of the perfected, quote unquote, perfected version of Shin Megami Tensei 5. And in fact, I think they're taking that original game off of eShop, uh, which is interesting because I own the original game. I actually gave that game a try. Mm-hmm. So this is sort of the uh, the definitive edition of Shin Megami Tensei 5. It's not a sequel or anything. It's the same game, okay. uh, but it's got a lot more content, and whatever. I, I don't think. SMT is for me, though. I, I gave it a shot. I played it for, I think, close to 10 hours, and I just I did not like the gameplay loop at all. Um, this probably improves it a little bit, but no, I'm good. I like Persona better. Hmm. Persona was the uh, was like a uh, um, it Persona. What, what is the word? Uh, God, um, Persona came from this. I can't remember the word. <laughs> When I remember the word, I will tell you a spinoff. It's a spin, spinoff. Spin, this there game. you go. Okay. I think, Persona, sure there. I think Persona is getting is more popular now. The spinoff is more popular than the original. Okay. But that's it. Not not a lot. No, not a, not a lot. Yeah. Hopefully you like Star Wars Hunters because <laughs> that's all you're pretty much getting. <laughs> God, the rest are all ports and uh, remasters, essentially. I mean, this is too. Star Wars Hunters. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I th- yeah, because no. Monster Hunter Stories. No, is, I, I meant Monster Hunter. Yeah, Monster Hunter Stories is a port. Yeah, and yeah. Shin Megami Tensei is like a, a definitive edition. But Star Wars Hunters is not even a game. Like, it's just don't get me wrong. I'm going to play. It's going to be fun. But it's one of those games that I need to play in conjunction with another game. Like, it's an arena. Bi- like, I can't just sit down and play that for two hours every night. I mean, maybe yeah. I can. Well, because you can pause it. You're, it's online only. Yeah, you know, I need I need it. another game that if I'm playing with like the kids are still up and like they might need something or I'm I'm doing stuff between like, dinner or whatever. Like, that's if I'm going to sit down at nighttime and play a few games. Right. Yep. Yeah, hmm. and that's free to play. 
You don't love some battle pass scam or something, though. I'm sure. I'm sure. Who's making that game? Is that is that Ubisoft or? Uh, it looks who? like them, but I don't think it is. And it's it's been a while, right? They've been talking about this one for a while. I'd say at least over two years. Oh, OK. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> Maybe more. Oh, it's Zynga. Well, that's why it's mobile. There you wow, go. Wow, Zynga. Huh. Published by Lucasfilm. Uh, it will be interesting to see how it runs, to be honest. But uh, again, I've played Paladins and it ran completely fine. Yeah. And with these types of graphics, like the, the cartoony graphics, it's not going to be over demanding, I don't think. I think it's hard to tell if something is demanding or not. Sometimes Fair games point. are demanding. Like we say, oh, the, the art style is not too big yeah. a deal, but it can be. I well, then know. you have no. You're right. I mean, like the lightsabers and shit alone are probably. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Sweet. All right. All right. Let's talk about. I guess what we've been playing. We shall. And um, I uh, I had a couple games that I had to stop. I was playing them both at the same time too. It was a weird week where I was like, God, am I going to just stop both of these games? Um, I was playing Banishers Ghosts of New Eden on my PS5. Sure. And I was also having crippling headaches all week. Ugh. And I realized after my last play, I was like, it's this game that's doing it. It's this game because I got a really bad headache right after well, I you played don't, it. You don't want a Hogwarts Legacy repeat. I know. And I was like, oh, my crap, it's the game. So I decided to just give the game a couple days break. And I didn't have any headaches. And I was like, holy crap. And then I did Google. And it turns out a lot of people are complaining about headaches from this game. Really? It's a, it's a third person point of view, but you are pretty tight behind the character. And moving moving around just causes a screen to move a little bit too much. This is the Banishers game, you said? Yeah. And sure. um, the other part is there's so many parts in this game where they're like, explore this area. And you have to figure out what, you know, you just have to explore and you'll find something. And there is like several times where I'm exploring an area and I just I cannot find what they want me to find. <laughs> it, 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 it's just like it's something in this area and I don't know what I'm looking for or anything. And I think that has made me got me a little crazy. And yeah, so I just kind of made me ill. So I had to stop, unfortunately. <laughs> and then the other one was in Stars and Time. I had heard some people say this is their favorite game of all time. It's a little monochromatic uh, oh. RPG. It's along the lines of like an Earthbound, um, yep. maybe a little bit of an Undertale or whatever. So the the gimmick here is that you enter a time loop. Um, the game actually starts off seemingly like near the end of the game. Like we're getting ready for the final boss. And you're okay. like, oh, OK. And then you die by just something random not not like you died in battle but like you just there's some story sequence and a big rock falls on you and then all of a sudden you come back and you are at the beginning of the game again and the same character comes to you and says the same thing and you're like what's going on and then you eventually find out that you're in a time loop and the gimmick is that you will die and then you begin the time loop again and i was like oh that sounds interesting you know i'll play it some people say this game's amazing and it's like okay i'll give it a shot i didn't like it um the time loop thing was so complicated they're like okay here it is when you do a time loop you keep your levels so the level you were at you continue to be your level but the other people in your party reset to their original level. It's like, OK, mm -hmm. that's lame, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the items you picked up, you lose. You have to go get them again. It's like, OK, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Yeah. And then eventually they get to a point where they go, OK, now the other characters in your party keep their level. And eventually you're like, so this isn't a time loop. This is just I died and I go back to the save point like it was like, oh, if you yeah. click here, you'll 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 say it was like this is just a gimmick for to explain how lives work in a game. Huh. But they do like when you do die, you do have to like go back to these rooms and explore the rooms again and get the items that you didn't get. And what's really annoying is, you know, when you play like an RPG and you like search the table, right? You click a on the table and it goes, you found medicine. Mm -hmm. There are times when this game will give you like 30 lines of dialogue. 
just to find medicine. It'll be like, oh, what is that on the table? And it's like, I don't know. It's like a green vial. Don't pick it up. Oh, it could be toy. And then it's like, it's medicine. And then you have to go through that over and over and over again. They give you a fast forward button, but you actually don't know if you're skipping dialogue you've seen because they say it does change. Okay. I don't know. I got so bored by this because it's a very bland RPG. The the battle mechanics are rock, paper, scissors, literally. That's and still- I don't know. I just got bored. And especially when you die, a lot of the deaths are just scripted. And yep. then you have to do the whole thing again. And it's like, this is not fun. There might be a point in this game where it gets more fun. Clearly, the whole game is just you ascending this dungeon to get to the final boss and that's it hmm. but it just never happened <laughs> it was just like i can't i can't play this anymore this is the in stars one still you're in saying. stars in time yeah so um i had to stop that one too so huh. uh i uh, decided to play after banishers i needed a game that wasn't going to make me ill so i finally started gran turismo 7 this is my my it's first an, Gran Turismo game. Interesting choice. So I can yeah. see that actually being a game that would make you sick. I, you know, it's like you are in a car and it's first person from the car, although you can change the viewpoint. But because you're in a car, it's you're not like spinning around, right? So sure. it it was it was fairly easy. And I was worried about this. I don't play racing games hardly at all. There's not many that I like, uh, but I really enjoyed this. It was just calming. It's 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 surprisingly accessible. I, I thought you had to be like a total car guy to like get this game. They make it really simple and accessible and hmm. it's fun. You like win a race and then you win a different car and then all the cars really feel. I mean, I can't tell you I haven't driven in all these cars, but every car has such a unique feel to it because it is like a simulation of that car. Yep. So if you drive an electric car, you don't hear like an engine running. You know, if you drive, um, they had a race where you race off road in a Jeep and the controller and the screen are just shaking like crazy. Oh, it's, so, it's so much fun. Uh, my goal was to buy the Lamborghini and I, I finally did. We got the Lamborghini. My son and I were celebrating. We got the Lambo <laughs> and then um, he got his Bugatti. He wanted a Bugatti for the game. And yeah, we rolled credits. Um, there's like a main campaign through the game. It's just basically like, hey, get top three in this race, get top three in this race, you know, change the paint color on a car. And it basically that's your main campaign. Uh, rolled credits, had a lot of fun. Michelle played this game like crazy. Okay. She kept coming into my office. To, hey, can I play Gran Turismo? And, it, and it all the same save file. Yeah, just my same yeah. save file. And it was great. Like she was doing progress. She made the game. I mean, I, I didn't play through the whole game. Like her and my son played probably half now, there, of this game. There's like an open world, right? That you drive around and you no, go to races. Was oh, that a different no. one? Yeah, Forza Horizon is sort of the oh, open Forza. world Forza, that's what simulator. I'm thinking about. Yeah, this game is like Forza Motorsport. Where it's about like serious racing. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's it's really pretty. And then once you roll credits, the post game gets more difficult. Um, we've been having some trouble with the races because you you need a car that isn't, you know, quite to this level of power, but then we can't win the race. And then this is the first time there's races where you have to like pit stop. Okay. You have to get gas, you gotta change your tires, and so you gotta figure out the strategy behind that. Like, when do I change the tires? When do I change the gas? They don't really tell you. Gotcha. Um, So the game has gotten a little bit more frustrating, a little bit more gearhead. But um, now after the credits, but um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. It's fun when you have a bunch of money to just go buy a bunch of random cars, old cars, old Volkswagens, Hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, I didn't think I would like it, but but I did. And uh, I bought (laughs) it like half price a few months ago. So uh, that's that's how I mitigated that risk there. Sweet. Um, and then I decided to play Persona 4 Golden on my Switch. Uh, I have played this before on the Vita before I ever owned a Switch. And I can't remember if I've ever mentioned it, but I got a bad ending when I played Persona 4 Golden. It was my first Persona game. And everybody said it was like the best game on the Vita. That's why I got it. And I ended up after about 60 hours had a bad ending and mm-hmm. I couldn't get out of the bad ending. So I was kind of annoyed that I didn't really get to see a real ending to this game. But it's because it's a Persona game and I played it badly. I I didn't understand like in a Persona game, 
you want to like maximize your days. You want to get your studying in. You want to like hang out with your friends and all that. But when you play a Persona game, there's always like some rescue you have to do. And they pressure you into doing the rescue. They're like, hey, don't mess around. This person is needs your help. And then like you forget to like hang out with your friends and do all those things. So since this game, I've played Persona 5. I played Persona 5 Royal. And now I'm more experienced with Persona games. So I think I'm having a much better playthrough of this one. Um, and I played it because I had ordered a physical version on limited run and it had showed up uh, a few weeks earlier. So I was like, all right, I should play it. Gotcha. Uh, and then on PS five, because I like to just replay things. Apparently um, I'm replaying. I mean, apparently you've been doing that for years, John. Yakuza like a dragon. <laughs> um, I played. I played through this on game pass and I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a reboot of the Yakuza series. So it was a nice little entry point. Um, the main character is really funny. The whole game has an incredibly good sense of humor. It's silly. The The combat is just stupid. I have a character who um, who uh, she shakes up a bottle of champagne and sprays it at people. And that's how she is kills this turn, them. turn based. Yeah, it's sort of a turn based combat. The Yakuza series is, is more of like a brawler, and I've never played any other Yakuza game. OK, this game was um, it's an RPG, a turn based, but it's all 3D. Um, looks great. And it's a story about this character named Ichiban, who is a Yakuza. And then he um, he ser- he basically serves a prison sentence instead of an actual killer in order to save face for his Yakuza gang. Nice. So they're like, can you can you can you admit to the murder and serve his sentence? Because we we can't let this other guy do it. And he spends like 18 years in prison and then he gets out and realizes that they're ignoring him. Um, they've like kicked him out of the gang and uh, they've shunned him. So his 18 years were for nothing. Huh. And it's just kind of a story how he makes new friends and then kind of unravels the whole mystery of why he gets shunned. And it is just a fantastic game. I'm enjoying it, I think, even more the second time. And um, luckily, I got it for free on PS Plus because it was a monthly game uh, like a couple of years ago. But the the sequel came out like six months ago, Infinite Wealth. And I want to play that one, but it had been a while. So I was like, I'm going to play this game again. And then um, in a little while, I'm going to play Infinite Wealth. So <laughs> um, but really good. Really, really. This game's amazing. It, it really it deserves to be in higher esteem in terms of like all time RPGs just because it's just so really? well polished and that far it, up. It's just really funny. It, it just entertains you the whole way. The most ridiculous stuff happens, men in diapers, stuff like that. It, <laughs> it doesn't take itself seriously. Uh, I, I love it. I, I love it. I'm on chapter six right now. Nice. Um, so that's it. Sweet. So what have you been playing? I mean, been playing one game, but really quick, I want to say, so, um, Evan's been playing, as you know, he played the shit out of NBA 2K and he he's been playing a ton of like iPad games. And there's nothing worse when your young kids are just wasting their life away with iPad games Um, and they only play on the weekends. So he was playing the um, the FIFA, the new FIFA game. I don't even have to call him FIFA anymore. They're calling him FC, right? I think for Football Club 24. Yeah, yeah, they they don't have the license. Um, So he was playing that on like the iPad and it was like it was it was garbage, right? So not so he said, I want to play this game on the Switch. I was like, all right, buddy, that's like <laughs> at least oh sure. So I went online and looked, and it was on sale digitally for 18 bucks. And then I said, Well, I still have a hard time buying him the games digitally because what happens is he could buy them and I can put them under his account, but he doesn't have online mode. And a lot of these games, like you need online mode, or if he wants to play it a certain mode, it requires it. Because I think it like grabs rosters and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, if I buy it digitally and put it under my name, I knew Star Wars Hunters was coming out. Like we both won't be able to play it at the same time. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it would both be under my account right. and we both have to be online. So I've learned this in the past. So I said, I I looked on, I was looking and I said, well, where, like I knew we were going out Saturday, yesterday. So I said, where can I buy this game physical? But then I was nervous because like, how much is it going to be physical? Is it going to be like a $60 game still? Um, Which was weird because Target had it for $60, but Walmart had it 
for 25 bucks. Like, isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah. So weird. I told him, I said, I'll pay the seven dollars. I was like, hey, if you want to buy that GM, you got to save your money. You got to buy it. And he had, you know, he's been saving his money. So he had enough money saved. I was like, all right, but I'm going to pay the extra. He's like, well, I thought it was $18. I was like, I'll pay the seven bucks. <laughs> I was like, it's really a win for me if I pay the seven dollars. So he's been he's been playing that. Um, but I've been playing one game, John. I've been playing Paper Mario in the Thousand Year Door. Um, when did it come out? Last Thursday, right? Yes. Well, that was the I first ran, Thursday release, I think. I, I ran credits today. Over 45 hours, John. I uh-huh. fucking dominated it. Um, <laughs> and we'll talk about the monthly mayhem in a, in a minute. But it, it, the mayhem actually encouraged me to go do a lot of things I never did before. And when I say I am like the closest I've ever been, um, I have one badge left I need to do. And I know where it is. And I have one tattle. So what you have never played this game. What tattling means is there's um, there's a character, Goombella, who's like your first little companion, uh, girl Goomba. And she has a skill that's called tattle. And when you use it on an enemy, it reveals how much health they have, how much damage they have. And then for the life of the game, any time you face that character or that enemy, it will have a health bar. If you don't do that, there's no health bar. Uh, so one of the monthly mayhem things is you have to tattle every single enemy in the entire game, which means you have to pretty much play most of the game with Goombella or continuously switch her out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've been doing that. And I actually, she actually is, I, I'll, I can tell you, but I learned to love her as a character. It's been a lot of fun. Um, so we have one character left and I didn't know what it was. And I had to look it up because it's something I've never done before. Um, in the game, there's something they call the 100 pit trial which is kind of what you think of it it's 100 floors descending into a pit um and every floor gets a little bit harder every 10 floors you can leave the pit but once you leave like you have to start back over at one and there's no save points at any point in the pit so like it's gonna take probably three to four hours if you do the pit uh and you're going to make sure you have all your items and healths and everything you have to go in there. Every 10 floors, there's like a big treasure chest. You get some type of cool random item. And then you got to continue. Do I am I have enough stuff to continue on for 10 more? Or do I need to leave? Um, and at the bottom of the pit, there's this massive boss. It's the hardest boss in the entire game. Uh, so I, I went and I played the pit and I beat it. Uh, I usually do that every time I play the game. Because you level up a ton. You get a lot of money. You get a lot of items. Not really a spoiler alert, but I didn't know this. After you beat the game, roll credits, um, and you've already beat the pit once, a new enemy secret boss shows up in the pit, mm. which you have to get to level 100, 100 again. Um, mm. the, the good thing is now is you can pay this guy 300 coins and he takes you to level 50. Not bad. Touch your time in half. That sounds so, like pay to win for me. <laughs> so now I have to go and I have to go beat this secret boss and I have to tattle on him. So I guess my point is he's the last tattle that I have in the entire game of every enemy. So I've tattled every enemy. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys a secret that are listening because I never knew this existed. John, this might not mean a lot to you, but if you miss an enemy earlier on and you didn't tattle on it, and I have no idea if this works for every enemy or whatever, however it works. So I didn't know this existed till today. Hmm. If you go to frankly, he's this little Goomba guy. You go to him all throughout the game. He tells you what to do next. Um, in his little house, there's a trash can with like rolled up crumbles of paper in there. Those rolled up papers are actual tattle logs of the enemies. You didn't tattle. So, like, I was missing two, and I went in there, and you uncrumbled the paper, and it's like, oh, you just found the tattle lot for this person, and it just added it to my screen. So, I was like, what the fuck? Do you never have to tattle one person, and you should just go to that trash can and read them all? Is that new? It might be I, new, I right? don't know. I don't it's... know if it's new. I'm a little upset if it's true, and I just spoiled it for everybody, but I don't know. It's there. I'm, it, I'm curious. It could be new. They they have added several things to the games. That might they be have. New. Yeah. There's tons of new little things, and that's kind of the fun I've been having with this game. Is I mean the character wheel, which is awesome. You can change between characters so easily. Uh, there's some there's some 
little tiny things that I like loved seeing. One of them was is the first boss you fight a um, Hoot Tail, which is a red dragon, and they say like there's like these little clues that Hoot Tail's afraid of crickets in the original game. So you had to find a cricket badge. If you put the the badge on and you used it, then like she didn't like the noise and it, it you did more damage. <laughs> but now in this game, for whatever reason, it's not a cricket; it's a frog. Like it's just like weird little things like that they've changed. Um, there was this one area where I remember you have to walk into this little shack, and there's just like an empty shack in the middle of a field. You go in there, and there's like a key inside. So I remember it up. I have to go get my key. And there was this giant boulder in front of the door. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? How do I get in the shack? And it's like I'm trying to like punch it. I'm hitting it with my hammer. I was like, I don't, I don't try to use my companions on it. I'm like, well, it's not working. And I literally had to look it up because I was just an idiot. And all you had to do was literally stand on the side of it and push it. But it was a weird concept because you never push really anything in this game. And now all of a sudden introduced like a push mechanic. I don't know why they added that. It was really, <laughs> really odd. Uh, but but I loved seeing, I mean, obviously this is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, so I got to see these little things. Some of, there's all these little side quests. They changed up a little bit. Uh, just the life improvements as a whole were, were so, made the game so much more enjoyable. They actually did. Uh, so there's all these different, land throughout the game right and you have to travel some one of them you have to take a blimp one of them you have to take a train um some of them you have to take pipes that are all scattered throughout the sewers and whatnot but they created in the sewers this centralized hub and it has a pipe to each and every oh, land right yeah and you now can just and they they made like a pipe directly to the main um city and you just can go in the pipe and you're in all this central area and then you just bam wherever you want it's super easy it, um, so, it is interesting that no matter how good a game is, older yeah. games just have there's a dissonance between older games and yeah. modern games. And so even though that game, like you said, this is like your favorite game of all time. Yeah. It's those little quality of life things that we are used to now mm -hmm. that when you go back and play those old games, it's interesting how you're like, oh, yeah. I, I hate this. Like the old remember the old games used to have like limited lives and you had to start yeah. the whole game over again. Yeah. Like we don't tolerate that stuff. So a hub world is common like i don't want to go traveling for three hours to get charges you a little bit go. more to do the side quest right because it's yeah. a little bit easier now rather than go back and forth um i still think it's funny I, I will always think it's funny and i thought maybe there's a small chance they'll remove it in this game but at the same time it's such the iconic part of the map so roadport is the city the very main screen of the very main town in the middle of the main area there's like the old school like you see like in the old movies or like Pirates of the Caribbean had had it. There's like that wooden little staircase with a wooden platform and like a noose just hanging there. Yeah, that was from a, the original game. It's just a weird thing to have. Like like I I get it's kind of like a like a like a lake town type slash road port. Like I said, it's a port, but like maybe it was like a pirate reference. It's just a weird thing to have in just a cartoon Nintendo game. Um, like kids probably have no idea what it is. It's just a weird thing to have there. It is a weird thing. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say was, so there's another, um, they say it's the hardest enemy boss in the game and it's called Prince Mush. So there's chapter three. You go to this place called the Glitzville, John, and it's a wrestling arena, right? And you, you go in there, you make your new name is Mario. They call you Gonzalez. And you start at rank 20 and the whole chapter is there's like some side stories and some mystery going on, but essentially you need to become the champion and to become the champion, you have to fight number 19, number 18, number seven, and you, you climb up the ranks from minor leads, the major leads to, you know, and you did all it's, it's cool. But, um, so they talk about this guy, Prince Mush, who used to be the champion way back in the day. Um, and you can, after a few chapters later, you can go back and fight Prince Mush. Um, but he's super hard because he has super high defense. And there's a hammer, I'm going to tell you, if you go in the main town upstairs, there's a bad shop across from the inn. And you can buy the, a hammer that ignores defense. Um, and it's it's a huge advantage. And then <laughs> yeah, what you I think... <laughs> what you do is use Goombella because you've been using Goombella the whole game. And Goombella, once you level her up, 
has a skill that lets Mario attack twice. So you can have Mario attack twice. Just keep using that hammer. Eventually, you'll you'll win. Um, but it's tough. He's still he's still really hard. He I still agree he's one of the hardest um, enemies in the game. So we've been killing it. Um, uh, having a blast. I'm, again, I get like a couple more hours left that I just want to finish up those three things i got one more tattle to do the pit and i gotta find the last badge i know where it is and then i'm gonna play a little bit more of the monthly mayhem with the little mini game that we had posted try to beat my time so sweet yeah. paper mario thousand year door wrapping it up i'm gonna need a new game within the week i guess that tuesday i have one. you got hunters yeah you got hunters tuesday i so. i looked up the frog cricket thing because i thought that was interesting why they yeah. switched it because i i find that stuff sort of fascinating yeah and here's the story the original Japanese version had it called frogs. Okay. But the frog noise they used was from a species of frog common to Japan that Japanese folks would recognize. But people in other countries wouldn't. So they changed it to crickets in translations because the sound itself sounded closer to cricket sounds than a traditional frog. Okay. So interesting. that's interesting. They called it crickets because it probably just didn't sound like a frog to, to, you know, to us, we, we think ribbit. And I wonder, I don't, I wonder what the original sound was like. I'd have to look it up, but so, I mean, it, I, I'll say it sounded like a cricket. Um, and now the new one, they must've changed. And I think they changed the sound maybe in this game closer to a frog. Mm. Yeah. They, they probably have regular frogs in Japan. They're like, just use, use a more global frog yeah, sound. <laughs> exactly. It's fun. No, like I said, there was tons of little things like that. I thought that one was interesting because it was right off the, you know, in the beginning, mm -hmm. there was tons of little verbiage changes and things the way people said or did. And, um, a lot of fun even some of like the i i was using i'm not gonna lie i used the the old gamecube strategy guide and there was certain things like like oh hit that block it's a mushroom and then you hit that block and it's something else like they they def they definitely changed little things like that as well um but yeah i mean the guide still worked for 93 percent of the game but there was definitely some things that they changed up a little bit it's like trying to drive across the country with an old atlas Sure, you'll get there, kind of. Head west, <laughs> head east. For the most part, I'm on my way, and then I got off the exit and I got lost. <laughs> that is that is interesting. Some yeah. of those old games, they would change little things in the old games because you could. You just had to change like a sprite or two, sure, and a and some text. But now in 3D games, you know, like a freaking frog has animation, and you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, you're like, you know, I don't want to make four different versions of this game. I won one version of this game and mm -hmm. uh, they probably like, they just don't put up with that stuff anymore. Oh yeah. Cool. Sweet. All, All right. right. Well, beach babes, are you ready to soak up those summer vibes and unveil your ultimate beach bod? Well, you're in luck because our friends over at Manscaped have you covered from head to toe with the performance patches 5.0 ultra. This ultimate all in one grooming kit is set to have you looking and feeling your best in the summer sun. Trust Manscaped and unlock the confidence you need to turn heads this season. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code NINDADS, N-I-N-D-A-D-S. Let's make this summer your smoothest one yet. I'm going to say, I cannot live without their lawnmower. What are they on now? 4.0, I think. Um, And then uh, they have the, um, the, the, the beard trimmer. But yeah, those two it's, items, it's 5.0. The lawnmower as well? Five, yep. Yeah, okay. that's, yeah. that's the main product. Yeah, they've been, they're all fantastic now. I'm, I'm still using them weekly. Uh, and you, the shampoo, did you ever order more shampoo? Uh, Yeah, I ordered more shampoo. Yeah, shampoo, yeah. the shampoo's good stuff. I like the stuff. bottle. The it's, bottle is fancy. It's, it's, just, a it's a very something. hard plastic. And you're like, is this like glass and then you like you squeeze it hard enough you're like no that's just a really hard plastic yep they don't cheap yeah. out um i i tried to shave my sideburns a little bit with my uh, lawnmower mm -hmm. and <laughs> with your lawnmower not the beard trimmer it, it was right there well, that's and right. i was like i i wanted it because the lawnmower has like a, a more exposed sort of yeah, yeah, bristles yeah. and, and i was body, like I just your body your face it. Yeah, because I've been kind of like growing my hair out and like my I don't you know, my hair doesn't really grow much on top, but it grows on the sides. Mm -hmm. So I have to like I need to I'm going to get a haircut probably on Tuesday and clean it up. But like my my sideburns are just like they're all over the place. And I was like, I just saw them the lawnmower and I was like, so how did it go? Did it work or not? Really? This? 
it worked. I was a little weirded out as I did it. And then I eventually I just kind of stopped. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> I just did a shower. I feel gross. What if it does something crazy to me? Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I like the product. Are, are we beach babes? Is that, is that what this, uh, this ad copy I, this, is? This should definitely been the female one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, th- I think we're being called beach babes. I'm okay with that. Yeah. We're beach babes. Yeah. It counts. <laughs> Agreed. All right. Let's get to the show. Uh, despite <laughs> surprising nobody, there's a great Deku tree Lego that has officially been announced. Mm. I think we've been talking about this one for like two months. Yeah. Uh, yep. What is it? Three hundred dollars. It is three hundred. It's not I'm... as pricey as the new Lord of the Rings ones. Jesus. Oh, really? They're five hundred. Well, it's zero if you're not going to buy it. I'm not buying it. I can't. I can't spend that much money. I. I can't. I just don't have it in there <laughs> on a Lego. This one's an interesting one because it has like sort of two appearances. And yeah. I are you gonna get this thing? I feel like you no, are. I'm no? not. No, it's. I'm gonna be honest. It's kind of ugly. Like, yeah. Uh, it, it, here's my problem. Right. It's just I'm pumped that they did a Zelda Lego. But when I think Zelda, and I think most of the world that thinks of Zelda, I just, I'm not thinking the great Deku tree. I'm just right. not. Right. Yep. And like, even looking at the display of it, it's just like a brown tree. Right. <laughs> and then, and then you have like this weird little thing going on. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, why is it $300? Right. Um, I mean, there's some small, cool little things hidden on the bat side of the tree, right? You have like a Torot seed. You have like the little, uh, what do you call the little spider skeleton guys? The Skulletols or? Oh, yeah. the Yeah. What are those called? Yeah. Skul- Skulchula. Yeah. They have them hidden in the back of the Orta Arena one. Mm-hmm. So like, and then even like the little mini figures are cool. And then you have like the one on the Orta Arena one. You have the, his little like tree house type thing where he lived with a little sign and it, it's cool, but like it's not three hundred dollars cool. Now, if it was a three hundred dollar Hyrule Castle and you have like Epona, or maybe you had like a Goron Mountain little dungeon area, or I, I don't know something else. I just why the Deku Tree? Why? Because it's Nintendo and it's Lego and they have to be different. That's why. Yeah, there, there. I, I mean, there are cool figurines. It comes with the Link and the Zelda from the Breath of the Wild game, and then it comes with the, I think, just the Link from Ocarina of Time. It does it? I haven't seen Zelda from Ocarina in there. It's no, it looks like it's Zelda Link. and it's. I'm sorry, it's it's Link and Young Link, I believe. Okay, I think there's yeah, like a yeah. mini, um, like even a mini version of Link. Yeah, and so that's pretty cool. And it has you know the the Korok guy and all that. So I agree, the tree concept is weird, but you know, as when I think of Legos, I think of them in terms of like if I put this on my desk, how cool would it be? I feel like it would be kind of cool. Would it be? I don't know. Well, I mean, which one do you like better? I like I, I'm an Ocarina guy. I'm a Breath of this. the Wild guy. I like the pink flowers as well. So that probably clinches it. Plus, you know, I I like the the blue style Link and Zelda it would all match together. I don't like the bottom, though. It's like these weird palm tree looking things. It's just like I'm not I'm, I'm confused <laughs> on what's going on. Honestly, if you showed me both trees and said, which game is this from? I would have no fucking idea. I didn't even know they were different. Um, yeah, that's fair. It is it is weird too that they're going to do a two and one, but you get more figurines, so that's pretty cool. But I, I don't think, think I'll get it though. I mean, I, you know, there's extra pieces too. I'm, I'm I can't imagine you, that you use both pieces for each build. Yeah, I think you just keep them in the box or something like that, right? I would assume so. I mean, I'm sure they use some of them, but like I'm looking at like the pink leaves, I can't see that being used anywhere else on the other one. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Um, I, I actually think this would be very cool on my desk. It will be tempting just to have like, you know, Breath of the Wild. I, I see it right here, right where Bowser is right now. And I just wrap my microphone around it. It'd be cool. But for mm. three hundred dollars, I try to I spend a lot of money on game stuff, but I, I've I've spent less lately. Yeah, I try to play it. I try to play it smarter. I don't buy all the boxed editions of everything. Yeah, 
I, I wait for sales and all that. And three hundred dollars for Legos. I don't even have the original NES Lego. And if I was going to buy one, I should. would buy that. You, I would say buy that one. Over. Right. Yeah, um, so. Even the question block, I think there's only one something. And it's I like a fun ugly. build. It's fun, yeah, though. The I know. Stuff on the inside, yeah, but the inside is the cool part. And it's I a know. very unique build. It just looked, I don't know. It didn't look ugly. I, I, I don't have a Lego room or anything like that. But that, that one was like, I never got excited for that one. No. Well, once you build it, it's like an engineering playground on the inside <laughs> i have the piranha plant and that's only because michelle bought it for me yeah that's a good that's one it. what about this guy this is a good one to have too if you like the little ones for your desk hold on i'm getting it oh yeah that one's pretty cool the little bowser in the purple car yeah this is cool he has little he has little bombs in his trunk that pop out but yeah that's mario 3d world right yep. yeah yeah, so I don't know if I would get that one, but I mean, I'm sure it was like cheaper and it's, it's like 30 bucks, 35 yeah. bucks. And, yeah. you know, it's perfect. I'd be more size. likely to get that than the DQ. Yeah. But yeah, it probably just motivates me to put like the NES on my Christmas list finally. And that one's put that that on my a desk. fun one. And then yeah. you have the, the little Mario guys with the Bluetooth. I do. Those I have I have all three of them right here with so Bowser. It interacts with the NES one. Oh, they do. So if you put it on yeah, there. It's so adorable. Um, they are. I don't have the peach one. I like that. If you put the Mario one, there's this little thing. You put them on there and you crank a wheel mm -hmm. and the actual TV screen turns to like Mario World 1-1 one, one, and that Mario plays the music. Yeah. It plays the, Mar the like Mario music. Right. Um, I keep hmm. these on my desk and they don't interact with anything because I don't have the other play yeah. stuff on my desk. So, yeah, that would be pretty cool to have it interact with that NES one. Because it is cool. It would give them something to do. That one's what? 300, I think, as well. Which? The NES? I think it is. Let's see. So you try, try to talk. Uh, 270. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Have you seen this one, John? This one's right up your alley. Is it going to be on sale, that NES one? No, it's Nintendo. I mean, it's you like, should it's buy like... this one for $75. I just sent it to you. What is that one? Oh, the chess set? It's a chess set. You build the pieces. You build the uh, board. That's fine. Oh, it comes with checkers. It's one to play checkers. I feel like the pieces would just fall apart on me. No, you could actually play with it, though. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm a chess traditionalist. I only play with Staunton sets. Oh, of course. Um, these look like they are kind of Staunton, but they look a little bit different. Yeah, it's it's my brain can't process every piece and go, oh, that's that. Uh, that Wario is a rook, you know, like that sort of thing. <laughs> can't do it all right so that's probably the first of what's going to be many zelda lego sets yeah i would think so i, would I don't know so what's well. next but um maybe like a like a hyrule sword or something like that although if you swung it probably like split into a thousand pieces um, yeah we see. just need i don't know we need, we need the castle yeah, Hy Hyrule Castle for sure, but like which version of it, I think is probably a big question. Fair, It'd probably be five. I wonder if they would sell it the way. Remember the old classic Lego castle set that's like from the seventies or eighties? It's like a classic. Oh, it's actually yeah, yeah. really expensive now too. Um, but I I had one when I was a kid, and I wonder if they would sell the Hyrule Castle with the same sort of graphics. Hmm. I think it'd be pretty funny. All right, tell us about the new Monthly Mayhem. Monthly Mayhem. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, and there's three ways to play and $40 to win. Three um, ways. We, I love three ways. I love three ways. We kind of made it open this time. We wanted everyone to join in the fun, and there's different ways to play based on different style of game you like to play. So first one's creative. If you're just an enjoyable person that likes enjoying the game and you want to use your inner creativity, any character that you come across in Paper Mario, and there's a lot of interesting characters, pick one. Pick any of the characters that you say, this guy looks funny, he looks unique, she looks like she's out of the ordinary, and you want to create this bat story for this person. So the idea of this one is, is pick that character, and let's say this character is going to be Mario's new little partner, companion, side buddy. Kind of pitch your case, right? What's this character's side story? How would they be a good fit for Mario? And um, that's it. Simple as that. Make sure you take a picture or a screenshot so we know who you're talking about when you submit it. And then John and I will judge it live on the show. I'm not asking for a novel or an essay. I'm talking about 
give me your best three to five sentences. If you want to go all out and make a video or a voicemail or whatever you prefer, if you would rather just call in and leave a story and tell us the character, that's fine too. I don't care how we get it. The idea is to pick a character, tell us a bat story, tell us why they'd be a good fighter for Mario. That's it. Best one will win $10. John and I will judge it. Next one is skillful. So this one is, there's, um, in Roadport, the main town, there's the Pianta Parlor, which is essentially an arcade. Uh, there's slot machines. There's all these other little mini games that you get as you unlock new skills throughout Paper Mario. And one of those skills you unlock is the tube mode, where you roll up into a little tube, right? And you can kind of go around. And this one is an obstacle course. So you're in that tube, you go through the obstacle course, and the idea is the best time wins. It's simple. Um, it counts up. Counts up. Yeah. Counts up from zero. That's what it does. There's no countdown. So it counts up from zero. Just go at it. I think I have 44 seconds this evening. I was pretty proud of that. Um, just do what you can. Best score wins. $10. And then if you're a collectathon, we have hardcore mode which is um, kind of already mentioned a little bit. There's three categories here. The tattle log, which means you have to go and tattle uh, all of the characters in the games. I already spoke about that. Uh, there's 134 tattles. You get a point for each one. There's the badge list. There's 84 badges in the game. Go out and get them all. Uh, I currently have 83. Um, every badge you find, you get a point. And then the art gallery, which I could probably update this now. So what the art gallery is, every chapter in the game you have to find all these little star pieces. There's like a hundred and something star pieces in this game. Uh, and they're just hidden, right? Throughout the entire world, they're everywhere. Sometimes you have to ground pound and find them. Sometimes they're out in the open and they're hard. You have to find out how to get to them. Uh, they're just everywhere. So the art gallery, once you find every star piece in that area and then you beat that chapter, uh, it's checked off. So there's actually a lot to do. There's, I think, eight chapters now plus road port, maybe nine or 10, between eight and 10. Uh, I'm thinking about, John, expanding this one a little bit, that if you complete an art gallery, maybe it's like times three points or times five points to kind of get more in line with the other ones. Uh, I wasn't sure how they were going to do this, but um, this is simple. You can go to the journal. If you go in the journal from the home screen, you can go to all three of these categories. It's super simple. It will literally say 102 of 134 catalog take some screenshots i know jesse and i have already posted some in the, the the discord channel so it's real easy for us to follow um and then of course if you enter in any one of these categories uh you'll be entered into the ten dollar lottery random drawing so there's a lot on the table not a lot of people entered but we have a lot of time left uh june 30th we want to give everyone enough time to play this game and enjoy it at the same time go in and try to do all these collectibles and and these other fun things so Monthly Bayham, Paper Mario, live now to June 30th. Let's see some entries. I want to see some creativity, John. I want to be able to judge these. We love doing <laughs> live judging. And for you, that hasn't even played the game, it's irrelevant. All we're trying to figure out is who is this funny looking character and what's their bat story. That's it. Right. Um, so good luck. Let's see the entries. Is the tattle thing um can people cheat by going to the trash can you talked about I, earlier? I, I don't know. I never knew about that until today. So <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> nice. Um, if there, there potentially will be some ties in the hardcore. If you matched out everything, yeah. I think if that happens, we'll have to just pull out of a hat. Everyone like that the- matched it out. And then best, best, best a lot. That's it. Maybe the, f- well, no, I don't want to do the first person to get there because I, I, we don't want to, people should get the whole month. That I they did should think of if you really want to go hardcore, right? So you do get a level in Mario. Every time you level up, you're level, like I'm level 30 something. Mm-hmm. The higher you get, it's just like most games, it's harder to get experience points. Like now when you kill an enemy, you get one experience point. Mm. You need a hundred experience points to level up. We could just say, highest level wins i mean if someone wants to go just grind and farm goombas every 100 goombas you kill you'll get one level mm. should we do that is that the is that the tiebreaker highest level let's sit back and see we'll where th- the numbers we'll are we'll think yeah. about it yeah we'll you can definitely about. make changes um see see where people goes yeah but like if we feel like it is going to get to a point where 
we're going to have ties because people are hitting the like stratosphere. Um, yeah. We can come up with something. All right. That's it. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Main topic time. Drew, not many guarantees in life. There's not. One guarantee that we do have right now is we're getting a Nintendo Direct finally in June. Mm. And we are recording this on June 2nd. And there's only 30 days in June because I know the song. That means there is only 28 possible days that we can have a Nintendo Direct, which is exciting because we have not had a Nintendo Direct since September 14th of 2023. It has been almost a year. That's crazy. Um, That is nuts. Now, we've had we've had some other little events or whatever, but it's been a long time. We haven't this. We haven't had a direct this year. That is for sure. Hmm. Is there a chance that this June Nintendo Direct will inject some life into what you and I both agree is a very bland 2024? We we have had a couple remakes. You've got Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gotten some of that. Super is it Princess Peach is the only new game, I believe. Yeah. Um, we have a couple games coming uh nwc nes edition luigi's mansion 2 is coming out in a few weeks mm -hmm. but that's also a remake we've just had a lot of remakes and all that stuff do you think the uh, june nintendo direct is going to give us something exciting for the second half of this year i, I think we'll see at least one nintendo published game nintendo franchise right that's donkey Kong mario um you know whatever I think there'll be one, it could be Zelda, but I think there'll be one game that's new, like legit new <laughs> that we don't know about. Right. Um, I do think we'll see a lot of other things that we, you know, I think I do. I, I'm still strongly feeling Mario baseball. Now, I don't know if it'll be a port or a brand new one. Um, God, if that's a port. If that's a port, I'm going to scream because you're like, you're going to you're doing a sports game, which doesn't take you so long to do. And you still yeah. port one. And it's been a few years since Mario Speed Rush. Right. Yeah. But so. we had we had strikers between there. Oh, we did have strikers. Was that that was Camelot as well? I don't know. Strikers is a couple years old now, though. Yeah, two years maybe. Or were we playing? We might have been playing Strikers last summer, or was it two summers ago? Yeah, I'll look it up. Um, I still think Strikers is the hit. I know. I know a lot of people said they're disappointed, and I do agree. It died fast. Two summers it, ago. It okay. I mean, it did die quickly, but I still think it was great. I mean, it lasted a <laughs> solid two months. I think you and I both assumed we would be playing this game for a year. That was what we pitched when we started our league. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I think Nintendo's own fault. It just didn't have that lasting power. Remember, remember when they were going to do different tournaments and they're going to have different restrictions to well, the game. And it was just, it was never good. It was, it was either no restrictions or only bananas. It was I, like, I, I do agree, but I ugh. also think that, People just like anything figured out ways to manipulate. Remember, people used to kick it off the back wall. Like it was just, yeah. Like people found ways around it. But at the end of the day, when I look back at that, I had actually one of my kids today said, Oh, I used to love watching you play Mario Strikers. And it was, I don't know why they said it out of nowhere, but it was like a fun game for that time. It met everything that I wanted it to meet. It didn't have the longevity. Sure. They focused on online play. It was but fun. at the end of the day, it, it was a game that we played for two to three months. I just played Paper Mario Six Dollar the game in 10 days and I'm done. And I love it. But that game got, got its money's worth. It had a longevity out of it. So right. it's hard to say. So if 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 a new Mario Baseball comes out and the same thing, if if it can last one to two months, I, I'll be happy with that. If it's like Strikers and, and I'm obsessed with, I'm not Strikers, it's yeah. like Speed Rush and I'm obsessed and there's ways for me to star level people and 100% it and do these other badges and put six months, nine months into it, even better. It's just, I, I don't need a game to be that long, but it's like Mario Strikers could have been that game. And it's just yeah. like all of their ideas, they, did. the they didn't evolve the sucked. game. They didn't want to, yeah. they didn't the want to build the game or do continuous development. They, they built everything up front 
and then well, everything they had got all dry. the DLC. Remember, they had all the DLC coming out. They had out. some like characters and like this... a new arena, but like none of that yeah. is exciting. None of that changed the game up in any way. And I, I sure. feel like it was all built out already. Like nothing was new. That's fair. The, the day they released it, I think all of that stuff was already there and they were just trying to extend because it wasn't paid DLC. Mm -hmm. They were just trying to extend the life of it by holding back some characters so that you would have something new to play in a month. Yeah. But like the tournaments could have really thrown in some like weird things, you know, and mm -hmm. like maybe make the field bigger. Like I understand like some of these things might not be possible, but like, oh, you're going to play on a soccer field that's twice as big mm -hmm. or, you know, like you're not going to be able to do certain moves or whatever. It was just the same thing every time. And we would be disappointed like, oh, there's no yeah. rules. There's no well, rules. Especially when they said it was trying to be like these new rules and that it never really was. They that's, never did it. Just to the excited level. Yeah, I agree. But it, it, it was fun. It just it could have been so much better. And I remember the first week we were playing like we were like, come on, guys, everybody play, get points. And it was fun. And then it just died. Yeah. It was like we were doing well and we only had like one or two people playing, you know, it was it was like, oh, I hear. You. But I, I, we are we will get Mario baseball. I do think we'll get Wind Waker. I do think we we'll, we will we will see Metroid Prime four, maybe. Um. Do you really think that? I do. I do. I, I, I think I think Metroid Prime 4 will be on the Nintendo Switch, period. I think it's possible. I think we get used to, especially on other consoles, games being announced and then they come out like two years later, like Star Wars Hunters. Nintendo has very much done the thing where they announce a game and then there's a release date. Yep. I remember Origami King was like that. And there's a bunch of other games I didn't want to try to think about. Sometimes they set up a trailer and they don't give a release date like Luigi's Mansion 2 and stuff. But they could very well announce Metroid Prime 4 and then it's coming out in a couple months. That's certainly possible. I just. I'm so tired of that prediction every single year. It's like yeah. that and many other games where like every year we're just, like, it's going to be it. I mean, how, let me ask you this question this way. When do you think they started developing games for Switch 2? Like how long ago? Year ago? Well, I think they're doing it already. A hundred percent agree. But how long have they been doing it for is my point, because we know they've been working for Metroid Prime 4 for a long time. Do you think after two or three years of developing Metroid Prime 4, we're like, hey, we're going to pivot again pivot. and start developing for Switch 2? You know what I'm saying? I, just, I, don't I, see I that think happening. Metroid Prime 4 will be on Switch 2. It might have a Switch 1 version but if you're gonna if you're gonna take a chance on metroid prime 4 which is not a big series That's i love metroid i love dread it's not a huge series if you're gonna take a chance on it making it sort of on the switch 2 is not a bad strategy but well, i can definitely see them doing it on it, both it, i think it is unless metroid prime 4 is their next halo and they have some type of online type functionality that they want this game to expand if metroid I, what are the, how long are metroid prime games 20 25 hours I, I don't know oh usually a little bit less yeah like 15 so, to 20 so my point is if this is a 15 to 20 hour game i just don't see them putting all the money and resources into making this a two console type game i think it's going to come out the end of this year and that's it I, I think I think we're overthinking it. I think it's not ready yet. They're making it for the Switch, and that's it. Now, if they do have this massive plan and we're expanding the Metroid Prime series and it's going to be online play and death matches and all this other shit that they're trying to, which, again, it's not Nintendo. But it's if they not. did do that, then I could see it going to the Switch too, and which is why I don't think it's happening. It's just going to be Switch release, holiday, this year, done. If if they were gonna make their own version of a Fortnite, it would have been Splatoon three. We and that's what we said did. it should have been. Yeah, Metroid Metroid Prime Four is just gonna be a single player game. It might have a multiplayer gimmicky mode, um, but really that's it. Um, it it's got to come out at some point. They've never announced yeah. that it's dead, but we haven't seen not even a trailer. So yeah, it might be announced, and then it might come out in a couple months. Yeah. But, um, I don't, they have two games coming out. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 comes out June 27th. That's this month. And then, uh, NWC NES edition is July 18th. And that game, I am getting less and less excited by I the am, day for that I game. I didn't even buy it, but I, I have to. <laughs> 
I think it'll be a great mayhem game. Absolutely sure. perfect mayhem game. That that is the biggest reason I'm getting it. Maybe, maybe. I mean, you can't oh. have a mayhem that's the, well time trials. It's the best like time, yeah, best time trial. Four seconds, kill all the, you know, bad I guys. I did it at three point five nine. Yeah, it, you um, know, it's like no, it's going to be an unbelievable time trial game. Uh, it's going to be a great mayhem game. I hope you could like make it. Like you could make your own run. Like. I want to say I want to have all these little mini missions. I want like a hundred mini missions over all these games. And I want to be able to say, so I want to personally select 10 of the missions and put them together in whatever order I want. Kind of like a WarioWare game where it's rapid fire in that order. Mm -hmm. And I can create a little code and I say, John, I want you to play my 10 games that I just made. Mm -hmm. And then you can have a leaderboard. That's right. what I want. Cause then we can make a mayhem and we can make it 10 whatever That's, we want that is my problem because increasingly i keep i keep waiting to hear more information about mm. it and there still could be there might but be i keep seeing more promotions of the game and they say the same thing it's these 15 games it's the same games we've seen in nes yep. remix it's all time trials but remember nes remix had lots of things like kill four enemies and and blah 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 blah, blah. And i want unlockables i want i want this yeah i don't want just you know how boring of a game it will be put multi mayhem aside for a second right i agree with you multi mayhem will be fantastic put hmm. that aside do you know how boring of this game is going to be if it's just time trials of these 15 old fucking games that we've right. all played and bought a thousand times like that's that's why I keep suspecting we're going to find out more. But there every time they there, don't, there, there has to. It's going to be like, I'm going to play it for two hours and be like, I'm <laughs> done. Know. I'll never need to play it again. If that's all it is. The the only thing it might keep you is you might go, oh, I want to I want to do I want to unlock all of the different time trials. Sure. And get like, you know, three stars on all of them. But like, where is the NWC mode? Like, isn't there? Because I know one of the remixes had that. Mm -hmm. Where is the original NWC? It's it's got to be there. The game is called NWC. I agree. Where is that mode? Because that's the mode I want to do for Monthly Mayhem. And I I want to know. Yeah, I want to see what the world. I want to see yeah. what the time was, and I want to. And what? Like they don't. They're not giving you the full versions of the game. Fine. I don't want the full versions of the game. But like you know. And it's just the time trials and the segments they advertise are so small. Like you said, it's like three or four seconds. Yeah. And it's like, is this it's really like, it? It's like is WarioWare. Minimum? But yeah. That's like WarioWare type mini but games. Even WarioWare had, you know, basically remix levels and it had all the other levels that were yeah. new and different characters. I'm getting less know. and less excited. But we have Mayhem. So that's coming out July 18th. You think they'll show that off in the direct? I think they'll at least mention it. Yeah. They, how much? So, so here's the thing. I don't think we're going to get anything. I don't know what they're going to give us. I usually for directs, I'm like, oh, there's going to be this and there's going to be that. I've given up on Wind Waker. I've given up on Metroid Prime 4. I've given up on Silk Song. I think we'll get a Zelda. I yeah, think we'll but like a remade. I think we'll get a remade Zelda. And I we? do think we'll get a Mario Sports game. The last time we got one was Link's Awakening, right? Am I missing something? Link's Awakening. We got we got Breath of the Wild. We got Link's Awakening. Well, we Link's got Awakening Tears was the Kingdom. a remake. I think they'll just be a port. And the only options are really what? But I feel it's, like we've been like, be Wind Waker. We've been saying Wind Waker for like years because Link's Awakening came out. I remember I played it uh, right before COVID. Yeah. I played it in October of 2019. But and what it came are the rumors? Not the rumors that they it's been shelved or whatever, waiting for a moment. What are these know. rumors? Like we haven't seen know. the game in we've been talking about that for four or five years. So I don't have any predictions for Nintendo Switch. I don't. I I, I don't you, we're gonna I see Wind Waker, we're gonna see a Mario baseball game, and we're gonna see Metroid Prime 4 coming out this year, and you're gonna get some other random ports in there like the Xenoblade. Or some Dragon Quest 2D HD, whatever, <laughs> give a shit to D. That's probably going to be, that is probably going to be on the Nintendo Direct. You probably get some type of maybe Microsoft game. I don't want to say Hi-Fi or all the other shit. It might just be something else. 
And then there's probably some other garbage that we're not thinking about that's just out there that maybe we already knew, like Professor <laughs> Layton. Like, that's a perfect example. We'll yeah. see Professor Layton because we already know about that. And there'll be there's some other game we probably forget about that we know is coming. And there then are, before you know it, it's going to be over. That's going to be it. Right. There's oh, But there's always going to be indie games. We've been getting indie games. We've gotten good indie yeah. games. We've gotten non-indie smaller games and all that. But I just don't expect anything. And if Nintendo tries to give us and say, look, it's Wind Waker at this point in time, because we're getting just nothing else. Yeah. I'm just going to feel more insulted. Like, look, it's another port four years ago, three years ago. Oh, yeah. If you if you give me like Thousand Year Door or Luigi's Mansion, I'll be like, oh, look, that's cool. Yeah. But the problem is they're giving you nothing else. I'm telling you right now, and you're going to start off with some weird game. You'll get Mario Baseball, like the second or third game in. You're all going to end with Wind Waker, and then they're going to say one more thing, and it's Metroid Prime 4. That's my prediction. That's what I'm thinking. I, I honestly think Metroid Prime 4 would not be a one more thing. It would actually be the first thing. Oh, uh, maybe. It, that, the one more thing is usually like a teaser or something's coming, but it, like... If if they have Metroid Prime what, Four ready, what about this? It's their if, one game. What if the te- now they already they already specifically said that there's no hardware. But I mean, what if the teaser was just like even like the way they did Metroid Prime Four, like they gave us a name or they gave us just like not even information on it, but something. No, that would be so freaking insulting. What do you mean they would just give you the name of the game? I don't know. That's what they, it, it they just... told us it was in development in 2017. <laughs> and then you say, oh, Metroid Prime 4 is in development. There would be a freaking riot. No, no Metroid, you... if they met. No, I mean, if they, they told us about the switch too. Oh, they're not going to do. No, they, no, they've they already they've said, said it. Yeah, they already said there's no not Metroid be any Prime mission. 4 will be the one more thing and it will be a legit trailer. Yeah, I still disagree. I don't think it would be a one more thing. It would. It's the main game that they would have. They that's going to go first. That's, but then what's that's the it. one more thing? Like it's not going to be Wind Waker, a port. Would it be? Well, yeah. I mean, that's where you would put a Wind Waker or something like that. I guess so. Or some other surprise, but they better have something. So I guess at this point, they better have Metro Prime Four because I'm, I'll tell you right now, Mario Baseball is not going to do it for people in general. I would be interested, but I'd like, be interested in not play. And like I said, it could be a ten day game. It could be a two month game. Exactly. It just depends it's how they do come it. And go. Yeah, it's going to come and go. And that's OK, because to be honest, what we need is this like games to keep us busy for now. I hate to say it that way. Fuck that. <laughs> no, I don't that's, need games to keep but us. That's busy. all we're getting. That's all we're getting. That's all we're getting right now is games to keep us busy. We're not getting anything that's like blowing us out of our socks. We're not getting a 3D Mario. We're not getting even a new 2D Zelda. We're not we're not getting a new Donkey Kong game. We're not getting those things. I really don't think we are. Yeah, we've waited long enough. So it this kind of dovetails into another topic. Yeah. Um, but like, I want to know what is Nintendo doing this year? Uh, mm-hmm. Because there have been so many these like little death by a thousand cuts. Sure. Instances where Nintendo is just like dropping it. Right. And I, and I put together a little list. Um, the latest one today was that you like you can't seemingly buy Nintendo published games on Amazon, like buying the codes. They're not like selling the codes on Amazon anymore, which I thought was weird. OK, um, but remember, we had the issue where Walmart was like canceling the games. Yep. And they were saying, the, oh, yeah. they're not going to sell them physically and you have to come into the store. And like that was all weird. I think that ended up being all like false. Like mm-hmm. I think it was like somebody sent out an email by mistake yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, but like that didn't get corrected. People didn't know what was going on. So that's really weird. We've gotten all the remakes. Obviously, we've talked about that. We're finally going to get our first Nintendo Direct. We don't know when it is. It's probably going to be like the 21st, 22nd in that range because they did the same thing last year. It's not going to be this week. No, because we're getting the Xbox showcase on Sunday. We're getting Summer Game Fest on Friday. Nintendo has already shown they're going to wait on that. But we only had one Indie World this year. Nintendo could have filled in all these gaps by doing multiple yeah. indie worlds. Remember two years ago, they did the little Christmas. Yeah, thing. That, was, that was fun. Yeah. Like, it, you know, like we're not getting anything. Give us a little some more indie worlds or promote more more games. Well, I don't know. Let's be we honest. Indie that. worlds suck. We didn't get a Tears of the Kingdom DLC, which was disappointing. Uh, they're not like 
ramping up their Nintendo Switch Online titles. Like, hey, we're we're really not offering many games to people. Let's the NSO like, is let's, a joke. Let's, keep, let's, let's keep, be honest. I don't. I mean, do you use the NSO? I haven't used it in a good while. No, because there hasn't been any like really compelling. Well, I guess games. for the Game Boy, I guess I went and played Super Mario. I guess I did the last little couple. Yeah, Game Super Boy Mario games. Land was a nice little surprise, but that's like a forty-five minute game, right? Sure. Um, they could have tried to fill in this lack of games by like throwing some more interesting stuff on NSO for people. I, I, the only thing I would say, I think the those the, the Zelda games were great, Minish and Cap, right? Oracle of Ages, Seasons, mm-hmm. like those were good games that weren't really easily accessible that yeah. you could play, right? Those are the things that I want to see, though. I, I I don't necessarily give a shit about anymore about the old NES games. I, I, right, but those, I think those were like last year, weren't they? I, that didn't come out recently. Agreed. No, I yeah. agree with you, but I mean, we don't need any more NES, Super NES games. I, we just don't. Like, if some of these games that we haven't really had access to. But get get some good games and fill it in a little bit. You know, they're, yeah, like, they're where's just all not... these N64 games that they promised us to, or yeah. just in general. Every That's so a... often there's a game, but like, don't you think that they should really like pile them up a little bit to keep people engaged? So. And like, it's... I find that weird. They they killed off amiibos without really announcing it because we're That's, not. Yeah, we're not getting any new amiibos. So they killed that, too. So what are they doing? Like in, in 2024, you get they look at 2024 and say, we really don't have any new games. Princess Peach has been really the only one. Mm. Right. It's remasters and this NES thing and all that stuff. You don't you think they'd be like, let's put out more Amiibos. Let's put out more NSO games. They have all these avenues where they could try to keep up and they're just not. And it's just so weird. Um, PlayStation's doing this days of play thing right now. It's a it's a two week thing. It's it kicks off the summer. There's lots of sales on games. They have these like flash sales. They are they have their rewards program that they're kind of bringing into the mix there's um they added games to ps plus as a bonus in between the monthly ones they're added mm-hmm. more is a whole bunch of things that they're doing they're, they gave away like um icons and stuff like that why doesn't nintendo do that like it's like they don't understand I, I, I that do they're boring with, the base at this at this point in their their sales right i mean this is the time it's just do something right do something yeah. fun and unique at least unless Unless this June Direct really is not what we're saying, and it's something completely different. Um, it could be. It, it could be that maybe that system wasn't dying, and there are some big games. There was just a lull, yeah. and we kind of filled in an information gap. But, like, you just assume that they have to fill in this kind of dry year with some exciting things, and they have mm. the ability to do it with sales of their games. They could They could afford to sell some of their games for... 10 15 20 dollars off just yeah. just to keep the year going a little bit and it's just so weird to me that this is the year amiibos don't exist you know and this is the year the you know what i mean like it's just weird yeah it's uh, it's just strange I to me we don't see we tales of the shire coming out maybe we'll see that in the direct <laughs> tales of the shire looks terrible you know you look terrible <laughs> i do um and then like Where's Doug Bowser and are they going to be around in Summer Game Fest? I never understand why, like there was like a year Nintendo announced Bayonetta 3 at a um, at a uh, Game Awards. They did the Joker Uh, announcement for Smash at a Game Awards and then they haven't done anything since. I feel so bad that Nintendo dads were like live streaming the Game Awards for a few years there. And it was like there was never anything for Nintendo. And then they just sort of stopped because it's just. There's nothing Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Maybe they haven't stopped, but when we, I think we streamed it actually last year, in, in fact, but there's nothing Nintendo. There, there's no expectation that anything will be. Why doesn't Nintendo just do that? Why don't they, why don't they just announce something at the Game Awards? Yeah. Sell a Nintendo Switch to an Xbox fan. You know what I mean? That's just not what they do. They maybe, maybe they should. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they should. Do a little something. Change it up a little bit in a year where you need to change things up a bit. They should just change things up. And it's just so bizarre to me. I don't get it. We never will. 
Uh, so we do expect a June direct. I'm I'm almost for sure that we're not going to get it before our next episode. Um, but uh, I think it'll be right after that, too. So um, expect that probably third week of June, unless they do something totally different. Because la- last year they had the Summer Game Fest June. It was like the same day. It was like June 8th. And then they did their um, their thing June 21st. Honestly, I had to look it up and I thought it was like July. Like I thought they just totally skipped their E3 <laughs> thing, but they wanted to separate themselves from everybody else. Yep. And so they'll probably do it again this year. Um, yep. There's a, there's a lot of uh, presentations this week, actually digital uh, devolver did digital. That, yeah. yeah. is on Friday as well. All right. Umbrella let's do tube. some, let's do some Disney guys. Oh, you want to do some Disney guys? Sure. We can try. All right. And maybe you don't talk Disney as much anymore. So let's bring you back. Bring it back. Um, We are starting to um, think about trips this summer. And Disney is not in the cards. Of course not. It's not. I know it is for you. You're You're going like twice. I might have to get my pass, my annual pass holder money worth. Your what? I bought annual passes last time I went. Yeah. So I did my money's worth now. I don't know. I'm committed for one year. But you don't you fly? Yeah. So in but like in order to get your money's worth, you have to fly. So you're actually spending money. Well, sure, but if I'm gonna go on <laughs> vacation, I mean, yeah, it's still a thousand bucks to fly there, and then but all I'm paying for is a hotel at that point, right? And then <laughs> oh yeah, that, no, then, that's cheap. <laughs> I mean, twenty five. If I could go to Disney for twenty five hundred bucks for mm-hmm. a week, I mean, I, that shit's expensive nowadays. So. Yeah, if you do like if you do the hotels on their property, yeah, that gets expensive, but it's fun. Sure. Um, Easy. You and, don't have to worry about you don't need to rent a car. All you're really doing is paying for food. I mean, my kids have been there enough. I'm not buying them Sylvan Airs anymore. So when you fly in, do you do you just take like a like an Uber to? Yeah, yeah like a 40, so like a $40 Uber to the hotel. And okay. then that's all I need. OK, yeah. So, so, like, like for, so for three grand or less, I can go to Disney for a week. It, and, you, you know, people say, well, you don't spend money on food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter where you go, you're buying food. Like, it's just that's yeah, the fact. Three, no matter three what, grand is is a low ball, I think. Even I though you have the tickets, it's, the hotel, the hotel, the so food. I'm staying at Pop Century, which is one of their, they call value resorts. Mm-hmm. And I'm going in a couple of weeks. And What's the rate per night? I'm paying for seven nights, $1,250. Twelve fifty for seven yep. nights, and to be honest, is that because you have the annual pass. Um, I did get a little bit of a discount on it, yeah. Okay. But plus, and I, to be honest, I'm flying for free because I use credit card points. So I'm going to okay. Disney for seven days for twelve hundred bucks. Again, I'm going <laughs> to sure. spend money on food. I get it, but so I mean that was worth. I mean, and I say that. I did gotta get to, the food plan. I you gotta get the to, food plan, Drew. <laughs> that's the dining plan. I did have to buy the annual passes, right? So you gotta spread that love over every trip. <sighs> Can we dial in your brother-in-law to talk about the food plan? No, we're not. Please. The food plan. The dining plan. <laughs> that's the dining plan. Um, so we are talking about going to California road trip. Okay. And we're talking about going to Super Nintendo World. Sure. Uh, go into uh, Universal, maybe for just a day, because I, yep. I, I don't think we could do. But but like be, get beginning to end of the day, like complete day, we, we go line drop to the very end. Right. Our kids are older now. Yeah, we can, you can we do can that. Do it. Um, but like we're not considering Disney like the conversation hasn't come up. And what I wanted to talk to you about is I feel like the magic I'm losing the magic with Disney. Yeah. And a lot of it centers around this Jenny Nicholson video that okay. uh, we talked about. You haven't seen it yet, but this was like this got into mainstream news. This was like NBC News stuff. OK, so Jenny Nicholson is, uh, you know, a Disney vlogger. Yep. And um, she used to work at Disney uh, and uh, she did a four hour video on Galactic Star Cruiser. That is colloquially known as the the Star Wars Hotel, which is currently closed, which is done, which is gone. <laughs> night, right? Um, a four hour video. And I remember hearing it going, who the fuck is going to watch a four hour YouTube video? Well, yep. I did. <laughs> so I, I watched it over the span of three days. I didn't sit Seven down. Seven million views in two weeks. 
Yes. Um, is it the one spectacular failure of the Star Wars hotel? Yeah. Yep. It is. And to, to summarize this video, it really is her. She went yep. and it is a full review and she like videoed everything like full on vlog. She videoed everything. And like she's one of those people that she knows her Star Wars stuff, whatever. Total nerd, whatever. Mm -hmm. And but it's a full review of it. But what the, the real crux of this video is right at the end. When she talks about like that, it's gone and whatever. Was it worth it? She says no, because it's incredibly expensive package. And the, the hotel thing is interesting because the Star Wars hotel is not really a hotel. It's not a hotel you stay at while you go to Disney. It is a, no, a LARPing a, experience. It's a cruise, think of a cruise ship. It's a cruise ship that you don't get off of, really. Exactly. But it's, it's on land. <laughs> yeah, you, you go in the building. You, you never leave. Um, you do actually go to Star Wars land for a while, but they put you in a very specific bus, like a bus. That's a sh it's like you're on a shuttle. Yeah, yeah, they want you to think you left the planet um, and it's very expensive, like in, it's like, like thirty five hundred dollars a person for, sort of for expensive. two nights. I, I looked you can, into it. You can only stay two nights. Yes, it is a very specific experience. You check in on one day. You are there till the night, till late into the night the next day. And then you check out 10 a.m. that second, that third day. Um, but it, so it's a very specific scripted experience. that's based on an app. And you communicate with the characters in this experience via the app. Mm -hmm. And it like unlocks areas where you get to go to because you explored that part of the story. And then it's like, oh, I have to at 1130. I have to be in this room to yep. do this thing or whatever. When you describe it, it sounds really fun. Her video almost just decimates the thing and kind of exposes it as it's actually kind of randomized. She was trying to follow certain storylines and she couldn't get into the app didn't work all that great. And the experiences were kind of bland anyway. But the, the part at the end is what really got me, which is that um, she kind of dug into the fact that from the beginning of the marketing of Star Wars land in Disney, there was a lot of stuff that they advertised that they eventually started pulling out of the Star Wars land information. And a lot of that ended up being at Galactic Star Cruiser. So in yep. effect, what they were doing was they were taking a lot of the value of Star Wars land and pulling it out and making you pay an extraordinary amount of money. So a lot of the characters that were going to be in Star Wars land are now, you know, or in Galactic Star Cruiser. And a lot of the experiences and your own story and that sort of thing was going to be for everybody in Star Wars land. And they turned it into an exclusive hotel experience. Um, so you should watch. I, I, I recommend watching that video. Don't watch it all at once, but I'm watching uh, she, it right now. I'm, he does I'm, it. I mean, I'm not listening, but I'm going through the video. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't know how you're going to scan through it. I've seen a lot of videos when it first came out of some vloggers and stuff, um, but there were shorter yeah. ones under, you know, they, they did like recap like trailers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, she it's it is thorough to death and it's a, it's very good, but not just that, like the Genie Plus thing. I we experienced Genie Plus the last time we went. We were pissed off about <laughs> Genie Plus because Fast Pass used to be free. It's pay to play, baby. And <laughs> battle pass. The, the thing about Fast Pass that is that was always fun to me was it was like a strategy behind it. Like the, go, the ticket, the ticket yeah. was fun. I agree. Right. You grab a fast pass for a ride. Like I remember being with my kids and they're like, oh, we want to go on this ride. And you're like, no, we got to go grab the fast pass yes. for this one. And then we're going to go to that one. And then we're going to come back to this one. It was actually yeah. kind of fun to try to like schedule yeah. it in your Agreed. head. And now Genie Plus, basically they got rid of fast pass and they turned it into Genie Plus, which you have to pay for. Yep. 20 and something, there's, $20 there's, a day, whatever it is for each person, $25 right. a day. Yep. And there's limitations. You can only use it a certain number of times a day. Well, and you actually largely have to kind of pre-plan it. Um, yeah, yes and you no. Go. I mean, there's, I, I think it's the opposite. Because then they had, well, you're talking about the original Fast Pass. That was the best. Then there was Fast Pass. You had to book your rides like 90 days and 30 days in advance, mm -hmm. which was ridiculous. So it's that way. You had to know which part you're going to, which day, which ride. It was it was out of control. Yeah. Right. So Genie Plus, I'd say is somewhere in the middle. I think it's better than that system. It's not nearly as good as the paper system. The right. problem with Genie Plus is it is very expensive. Bottom yeah. line. If you want to pay and you don't mind paying, you can do a lot really fast and you can see almost everything. 
right. by doing it. You got to be smart, right? Because the way Genie Plus works is once you book a, an attraction, you either go on the attraction within two hours or you can book your next one after two hours. So if you know how to do it smartly, you can really strategically like everything out and you get to see everything very smartly. Meanwhile, you're <laughs> buying rides. It's it's a lot. But what I hate about it the most is I'm on my fucking phone all day long in, mm-hmm. in an amusement yeah. park in Disney right. World where I'm just trying to hang out with my kids and enjoy it all. The one place I don't want my phone, you have to live on your phone. Right. And that's the part I really hate. Uh, like you didn't. I mean, back in the day, I just didn't really have phones, but the paper one, there was something about it. Like you said, I have to just run across over to the Tower of Terror just so I can get my mm-hmm. ticket. And then I'm going to go all the way back across the park just to go on this ride. It, it was different. And there was, there was like a little bonus aspect of the Fast Pass, which sometimes you couldn't use your tickets. And you ever do the thing when you're walking by somebody and you're like, you hold them out and you're like, does anybody, you want a Fast Pass for yeah. this ride? You can't do it. And then they're like, oh, thanks. You know, and yep. like they jump on. Um, it, I, I think paper wise, it was like, it was bad for the planet, right? It was tickets sure. all over the but floor everywhere. and everywhere. Yeah. 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 Um, but the genie plus when you have a family of five, four, it's mm. like, you got to pay per person. It's a lot. And, it, and the thing that sucks is it was something you got for free and now mm. you, you don't. And then they're I trying mean, to throw in the photo package with yeah, it. I, and it's yeah. like, but I don't want the photo package. I wanted, I just wanted to do the fast passes. I, I get the photos for free, John. Just saying, but I I, I agree. Deal? You gotta you you honestly for if you don't like a full time like seven blown Disney World seven days, mm-hmm. like you gotta plan probably for almost another thousand dollars. No joke for like Genie Plus Lightning mm-hmm. Lanes. Like per, per if you want to do all of it, if you want to use it to the maximum extent and do on every ride you physically can, it's probably close to a thousand dollars, if not more. Yeah. Because if it's twenty to twenty five dollars a person per day, and then in between that you're buying the lightning lanes, like I'm gonna go up to Tron and I say, oh, I could pay eighteen bucks and just walk on Tron. Fuck it, I'll do it. Like, oh, you want to go on too? All right, great, eighty bucks. Let's go, guys. We're all going on Tron. I know, like, but, you're like, it, holy but, shit! Before you know it, you're like, I just spent eighty dollars. Like, it's, it, it's but it reminds me. It reminds me of like. Like, yeah, like you're like, oh, we're going on the ride. But the the joy of going on the ride is lost because you realize I just spent 80 bucks to do but this. The <laughs> other part of it, too, right, is now you have all these lines that you're the the, the, the magic of Disney is waiting in a lot of these lines. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you like you walk. Through, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to wait four hours to walk through the Avatar line queue. But like the, the Avatar line queue is also one of the best line queues in the planet. Right. So like. But when you now do the fast pass or the lightning lane, whatever the hell they call it now, you skip it. You go almost at the back entrance. Mm-hmm. So you don't even see the coolest part of the ride. Yep. Or, the, or, or really. And, and that's the part, like you said, it's building up your excitement. You're seeing the story, the pre-shows. And that's kind of the difference between going to Disney and a Six Flags, right? You chatting have with stuff. your friends, chatting with your family. Yeah, I mean, seeing agree. everybody going off and coming back, sure. seeing their reactions. I'm and not like... saying I want to wait in line for hours at end. Right. But. I agree. Like just walking on a line, like walking onto a, a big attraction like that does kind of lose like your hype and excitement for it. Yeah. The lightning lanes piss me off because there, there's some rides that, like it used to be the fast pass was free for every ride that had fast pass. Mm-hmm. Now there are some rides where you have to pay to yeah. get that. Or you that just wait in line pass. or you wait in line or, or you wait in line. And uh, Jenny Nicholson goes into the fact that, now used to be that fast pass was there to get people through lines faster so they can go around and spend more money mm-hmm. now they want the regular waiting lines to be longer they do to kind of push people to pay for genie plus and the lightning lanes i'd love to know like what the ratio is is it like you know for every four people, let three people go from like the lightning lane. Is it like seventy five percent flow through lightning lane and twenty five well, through standby? They always by- merge, right? So the lightning lane, well, the, the, the lightning lane is always pretty quick, but it hits a point where it merges, and then yeah. you kind of wait. And it just depends where that merges. Some rides it's a little further back. Some rides yep. it's really up close. You're gonna go. You're gonna get on the ride faster. I I always enjoy the original fast passes because sometimes you get to a ride and you go, oh, the wait is only. 30 minutes let's just wait yeah with agreed. genie plus you kind of have to pre-plan it so you're like oh, which rides are going to do the fast pass but maybe maybe the ride wasn't 
long at that point. You get to the ride and it was at a 10 minute wait. Like, damn it, yeah. I wasted my wasted wasted my Genie it. Plus. I know. It, the, so the Fast Pass was part of like, oh, look how long the Thunder Mountain is. Let's grab the Fast Pass. We'll come back and we'll go to Haunted Mansion here. Yeah. So just sort of so just imagine the poor people, like if my mom and, my, and her boyfriend do it, like, they don't even really have smartphones. And then you have the people that like, you know, they save up their life savings to go to Disney because it is expensive. Like they've yeah. never been big family. Maybe they used to three or four kids. And it's like, they don't understand how to use all these systems. So now they yeah. go there and they only get to see really half of the parts have to offer because they're waiting in lines the whole time. And it's like, I mean, that it's are increasingly longer. Yeah. I mean, by design, but you know what, John, people keep paying, people keep going to the parts, the prices keep going up, people keep buying them. It's like, I'm, and I'm guilty as well, but it, it's just everything in life. As long as people keep buying it, it doesn't matter. They don't give a shit. Well, so the point of my story is I'm not buying it. So we're not going to go to Disney. because <laughs> feel. I feel like the Disney magic is it used to be like I want that Disney experience. And now yeah. you feel victimized. Well, Disney's a scam, too, like because it. it's like if you buy a one day ticket, it's like two hundred dollars a person. But if you buy like seven days, it's like five hundred bucks. Like, I know, like, it's, it's so, it's so weird it's it's which like well that's all right that's not bad it's only like a hundred dollars a day like that's how much it would be to go to six flags but like right. one or two days at disney you cannot it's not worth it it's not worth it you can't do it it's not but worth now, it. disney world you can go for like you're going for a week yeah you can't do that at disneyland but no, the tickets you, we did no. a four day at disneyland too, too long the last time it's too long it's it gets you know there's only so much you can do i love california yeah. adventure I love Disneyland, but like yep. after a couple of days, you've kind of done everything and you're just doing repeat rides. Yeah. Disney um, World, you have the four parts. Usually what we'll do is like you do two, then in the middle somewhere, you'll take a break, go to a water park or do a hotel day and go by the pool or go to the shop in. Then you'll do two more parts. And then like the last day, like what was your favorite part? We'll go back to that park. Animal you know Kingdom. Saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. so it, 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 it's easy to there's a lot, but you're right. Disneyland is tougher. Right. Yep. So. Um, but no, I, I, I just feel incre increasingly victimized. Like you said, like you just, you're like, you're having fun, but then you're realizing you're paying a premium on every little thing mm -hmm. constantly. And it, it drives you like nuts. The last one, last time we went, you know, um, you know, when you want to get food, right? Like food becomes increasingly expensive. It becomes increasingly, um, not convenient. I know like when you go to like some, bland hotel in the middle of the country right you get mm -hmm. like free like continental breakfast yep. disney's not doing that they they no. have like a like a buffet that's like 30 dollars a person you oh know? yeah and um, shitty just food. the stuff like that so we we are skipping disney um i think genie genie plus the, the last time we went was the first time we experienced genie plus and it was such a negative thing on us it's a lot it's it, like i said it's, and if you're willing to pay it's it's actually great but it's still a but lot. They took it away money. and then made you pay. If it never existed, sure. it would be fine. If they charged you from the very beginning, it would be fine, right? You'd be like, "Oh, yeah. I don't need to do this." But they took it away, and then they charge you a bunch. And yeah. um, that 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 was very uh, a very negative experience for us. And but how that ties in the Jackie and Jenny Nicholson video, which is kind of like this new trend from Disney over the last few years is um to just like it's become more of a business it always was a business but like even though the price of the ticket was going up 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 like you said if you went multiple days it it still averaged out pretty bad but the value was there a uh, 175 dollar ticket for the day is not a bad value it, you, you, know? get a, you get a lot out of it the entertainment you get a I lot. Mean, Broadway type style shows, parades, right. fireworks at night and all the I, I agree. A hundred percent agree. That was but never like, the the big problem with it. It was just that once you get in, you feel yeah. like cattle and it's like, you know, how much is the food? When well, we you, went last time we went, we went to uh Disney, we went to Disney uh we went to Disneyland, right? We decided to try the restaurants because that's something we never really did. Mm -hmm. We always just we, I was so focused on attractions and we like maybe every so often we would do one restaurant or something. But like we had restaurants every single day. Yeah. All of them were pretty disappointing that the food was never really great or anything. Mm -hmm. And it was so expensive. We did that. um The buffet. It was crazy. The one I forget the name of it, but it's the one with, with the characters that walk around mm -hmm. and it's a breakfast buffet. All you can eat. 
Mickey yep. waffles, whatever. I always love it. But the thing is, you go there in the morning and you don't really want to like completely pig out on a buffet yeah. when you're about to go on a rides. Sure. So you're kind of limited by I can't I can't pig out here. Yeah. And oh, my God, the bill was like two hundred and fifty dollars. And that yeah. included my kids who they don't eat much. No, they had correct. a Mickey yeah. waffle and some bacon. And that was it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, we can't go here anymore. Goofy's Kitchen. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly expensive. Kids are just not going to eat. It's, no, it's it's, it's it's another pay to play thing, right? Because like at least if you go to the character meals, mm-hmm. the when I mean my kids are already getting older, they don't care. But at least it's like, oh shit! Now I don't have to wait in line to see Mickey because we just saw. Him. Right. <laughs> I don't have to wait in line to see Goofy. I don't have to wait in line to see Donald because I now saw. Now I'd him rather all. I'd rather wait in the line because when you see the characters Mickey. in the park, it's free. Like, sure. When are they going to start charging for that? Like that's probably that's the next a good thing. point too. We have five bucks just to see a character. So we're probably going to go to Super Nintendo World this Sweet. year. Um, I'd like to go to the San Diego Zoo. Yeah, I love the San Diego Zoo is fun. We're we're also talking because we've never done this. Go see like the Redwoods. Like uh, the Redwoods is also fun. Yeah. So um, and maybe just some other stuff, maybe stuff that's free, maybe like, you know what I mean? Like like a small museum or, you know, a, do a like visitor that center. Go to go to, you ever done the Alcatraz? I thought I thought Alcatraz was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind honestly unique. doing that. It's pretty cool. I've been there twice. Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking to do this time. And Universal is really a one day experience. You could probably yeah. fill in two days, but you know, it depends on how much you want to inspect the Simpsons area, yeah. uh, Harry Potter, that sort of thing. Transformers but, they um, have there. Yeah, they have. Yep. Yeah. So, um, nice. my, my only problem is going to be the last time I rode the Harry Potter ride, I almost threw up. That one's intense. And, and I want to do it again. And I, I ate a whole bunch beforehand. Don't eat a bunch of barbecue and then go on the Harry Potter no. ride. Take a little Dramamine in the morning. It's not going to hurt you. I'll probably do it first thing in the morning and I won't eat anything yeah. until I do that ride. And you then that's Dramamine. it. I mean, Dramamine's yeah. not going to hurt you. That's what they're there for. It's, it's going to be all mental. Nice. But uh, the magic's dead. <sighs> all right. It's always dead. Let's answer some question from the listeners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one is from Chris HL94. We got to talk some hockey, by the way. We do. Which sports game franchise would you like to see revived on the Nintendo Switch successor? And you are not going to be able to guess which game Chris HL94 would like Ooh. to see revived on the Switch, too. Yes. <laughs> well, let's 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 go with hockey here for a minute, because there's 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 not there's not any hockey games on the Switch. Let's be blunt. Um, there's just not. No, there, so, there's some like weird indie ones. Yeah, but we need. I'm gonna call back one because this this franchise is on the Switch. But I want to bring Mutant Lead Hockey because that was a fun game. I had a ton of fun Mutant Lead Hockey back on the Sega. I don't think it was. I don't know if it was on Super Nintendo. I know it was on Sega Genesis. Um, Mutant Lead Hockey was good. Mm-hmm. Imagine what an ice hockey would look like today, like re completely done. But fast Wasn't guys that, and little um, guys. They did a they did a nice hockey. Remember they they one that looked like ice hockey it was like a nice hockey league thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. I played through like a whole season of it. What was it called? Not uh, the blood one. Yeah, the violent one. Super blood hockey. Yeah, was that any good? <laughs> uh, overall, it was pretty good. I didn't I didn't like the roster management stuff. I just wanted to to play, mm. but it was it, oh, it was like it was either. a good fun hockey game. Well, I'm telling you about that one of Patsy's called Tape to Tape. It's out on Steam. I'm not a Steam guy, but um, that one's supposed to be coming, and that one's fantastic. It's actually like a road mode, road like mm-hmm. mode. Um, but other franchises, um, there was Bush Hockey League on the Switch as well. I don't remember that one. I mean, to be blunt, I think we need we need we need an NBA Jam. We just need NBA Jam. They really? made a, an NBA Jam, I think, like 2016 or something. Really? For I, not I played it on Xbox. I freaking loved it. I got we used to play like Steph Curry versus LeBron. James. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's cool. It's a really good version. I still have it on my on my Xbox. They never, but they haven't made an NBA Jam game since then. And huh. I feel like I don't. You know, we have the NBA 2Ks and the licensing, but like yeah. the, the NBA would really do well to like have an arcadey NBA jam. Yeah. Like I assume the NBA 2K license is like no other game can have the real players because we want to get Did all I tell the money. You when I went to New York City, mm-hmm. 
I went to the NBA store and they had this wicked cool Celtics t-shirt and it was like, it was NBA jam characters. And I forget it was like there. It was, but it was like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown or something. And it was, you know, current rosters and it, it was an NBA jam t-shirt though. It was awesome. I wanted to buy it so bad. Do you know how much money it costs, John? $50 for like a t-shirt. And I said, yeah. I, I just, I can't, I just like, like the Disney shit. I just, I can't in my own will spend Fifty dollars on it, just a t-shirt. It kills your excitement, right? Because you should it be does. excited to get this hockey shirt, and then you're like, yeah. "Oh God, I feel like I've been victimized." I know, so yeah. I didn't do it. But yeah, what about you? Any other old school or? Um, I I I don't want to say a baseball game. I love baseball. My Mets are terrible. Um, but I I still have not played Super Mega Three. I have not played Super Mega Four. So yeah. I end. And I have the opportunity this week to get MLB The Show on PlayStation, and I still haven't. So Mm -hmm. I can't say a baseball game, even though a Mario baseball game would have me interested. Baseball 3000? Is that what it was called? That robot one? Remember that one? Yeah, there's a bunch of those on there, but none of those would would interest me. Um, Basketball, NBA Jam would be kind of cool. I still have NBA Playgrounds 2, which I haven't played. Oh, yeah, yep, I remember that one. one, And I I liked NBA Playgrounds 1. Like, I like that game. Yeah, I should go back to that because you get the packs and you get new players. It was fun. Yeah, I think two is a little more uh, gotcha um, sort yeah, of thing. Of course. Hockey. I would if you made like an NHL 94 style game, uh, gave it a nice smooth frame rate and then maybe, you know, maybe some remote play or make a season or something like that. I would mm. probably play that. Um, Do you remember Mario Lemieux hockey? That was another good I, one. That was, it was side to side. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, Hit the Ice was a fun oh, one. Hit the Ice. That was only an arcade game? Or did, that was on PlayStation. That maybe. was on Turbo Graphics too. Oh, really? Yeah. I think it was on Super Nintendo as well. Hmm. Oh, you're right. Um, it was. I'm trying to think of other games. I used to get into the FIFA game on 3DO of all places. Because I used to play a lot of FIFA games. It too. had really good audio and it was like a nice showcase and you can hear the people chanting and yeah. stuff like that. But I don't think I would play that now. Um, but yeah, no, I, I would definitely do an HL 94. I'm trying to think of other specific sports games that I played that I would be interested yeah, I used in. To play but a lot. Nothing really comes. And we talked about Punch Out. If I mean, boxing is a sport barely anymore yeah um that would be cool too and you know would be fun would be to play i wouldn't buy it but like a cricket game or something like that where i could learn Hmm. just learn when i was a kid i learned tennis by playing a like nes tennis john just play sports story (laughs) isn't that tricky the whole thing no i don't think they fixed it that's terrible (laughs) But I learned tennis rules and scoring and everything by playing a video game. I probably learned how to do scoring on bowling by playing a video game. I would love to learn cricket because when I see cricket, Mm -hmm. it just looks so weird to me. And I really want to learn the rules. So I need to play like a cricket game. I know they have cricket somewhere. Um, I would totally play like an arcadey cricket game so I can just learn cricket. Mm. That would be that would be kind of fun. Um. But yeah, nothing else comes to mind. I played um, the TV sports games on Turbo Graphics. I don't think we need those back again. Yeah, uh, world class baseball on Turbo Graphics. I love that. But again, we don't. It's it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same today at all. Um, and then my brother and I played the NHL. We played mostly NHL '93 on Super we, Nintendo. I played '93 as well. Mm-hmm. '93 '94 was pretty ice. similar. '95 kind of changed the game quite a bit. Yeah, I know NHL 94, the ice is blue. That's like the big difference. Um, We played that and we played uh, we played Tecmo on NES. And like Tecmo would be a great game to come back. Right. Tecmo football, Tecmo Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I know that they put out like ROMs with updated rosters. It's not official Mm -hmm. or anything. But they do do that, but it's not really accessible. Remember, so like a, a did you ever play or remember Cyber Tiger, Tiger Woods Golf game? It was like Definitely cartoon. Not. It was cartoony, kind of more like on a Mario Golf, but had like mm-hmm. power ups and stuff. But had like a couple PGA players. Oh uh, no, I, I I didn't play. 
I played NES golf and then that was pretty much it. Yeah, I played every golf game, John. I'm not surprised. No, yeah, um, I mean we talked we just I mean we just mentioned a lot. A lot. How about stitching? Would you consider that a what is that? Stitching? Remember was it a rollerblading game? Uh I I I don't know. I I, I the, liked California games. Oh, that was a good one. I never got into the Tony Hawk games. TNC surf design. Maybe we need a surf. Yeah, surf. I mean that game wasn't great, but that wasn't yeah, great. I, I played that a little bit. I rented it. Um, California games I thought was fun because you do some hacky sack and you're like, what the fuck is the scoring here? You know, it's like most of this just trying to do figure they, out. Do they you still do BMW make... and you just fall immediately? Remember the old school like Olympic games? They were actually pretty fun and pretty solid. Like Unlike I remember, the PC. like the Olympics '98, I think it was one of the winter of '98. Yeah. But you're doing all these like fun, the shoot in, and you're doing the long jump and fitters. They're just like it's like mini games, but not really. Like they don't really make that anymore, do they? Yeah, you got Mario and Sonic. <laughs> they didn't even make them for this year. They yeah, because they made it for the the 2020. I think I think it should be a huge collector's item. That there was Mario and Sonic Olympic Games 2020 because it, that never happened until like 2022. True. Um, so I think that's just like a historical thing. Mm. Um, I don't think I've ever really played any of those. Is that I bad? have played Doesn't them? It... They can be a little bit fun, but for the most part, you played a couple times and you're all you're all sort yeah. of done. Hmm. Um, I don't I don't really need those, but I did. I used to love like back in that day. You used to go to Computer Lab, and you had you could pick up a disc. And everyone wanted to play summer games or Olympic games because yep. those were the best like video game ones available yep. or they'd pick up Tetris. Well, not me. I was playing Alone in the Dark, John, in computer class. That's where it all began. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it took me four years, five years. I beat it. <laughs> I I did watch the um, there was a big um, uh, documentary on um, Oregon Trail. OK. From uh, from the uh, who's that guy? The uh, Nintendo guy. Um, oh, I saw that documentary. Uh, yeah, I didn't watch it. I, I saw it on TV. It's when like was... an hour. It's pretty long. And honestly, it gets a little dull in places. But they, he's mean... interviewing the actual developers and how it came about. And then when it was like it was basically stolen, essentially, and sold to schools and stuff like that. But I like I realized that I did play Oregon Trail. But some of the later versions that were a little bit more graphical are kind of cool. And so I've actually yeah. thought about buying it because I know it's on Switch. It's like, That's maybe right. I'll just it play Oregon Trail. I mean, it's the original roguelike. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Rogue is the original roguelike, but it's a roguelike. So sure. I'm like, maybe I should play it and do that report back in two weeks. Yeah, there's nothing else coming out on Switch. I'll just Might as well. Oregon Trail. What do, what do, you, what do you think it costs? Tell me what you think. No, it costs. it's it's. I'm going four ninety nine. There's DLC. Oh, uh, hold on, it's loading. It's it's loading up. It's got a pretty purple screen. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, you know, this is I, a this is a way more graphical version of it, though. But it this doesn't like, look like sixteen. It, no, it does not look like at all what the original looked like. And that might make it not as fun. Like, I feel like the the kind of ganky older retro graphics would probably be better. Like this game has DLC. It's like, what? Well, yeah. Like, what, what do you have? Another trail? I know. Different states trail. Cowboys oh, yeah. and Critters DLC. This looks like oh, it yeah. just ruins it. Honestly, I'm looking at it. This is like remade from scratch. Yeah, it's definitely. And it looks like it has some modern stuff that or it exposes stuff that they don't just look at these screenshots again. this game looks terrible <laughs> right it looks like a yeah it's they have the license though watching but, the yeah, video I would be interested in i'd actually be more likely to play it on like my <laughs> dos box or something like the original versions of it all right that's not gonna happen all right all right that's the show that's it that's a wrap good, good question chrissy joe by the and, way, uh, by the way, hockey, uh, I am a Devils fan. Yeah, um, I celebrated the Rangers being eliminated again yesterday because the mm. devil, the Rangers shall not win. And the uh, the last three Stanley Cup titles belong to the Devils, even though those titles go back to the 90s because the, the Rangers and the Islanders have not won in a very long time. Point. And the um, Panthers but, beat the Bruins. So, yeah, every oh, you can't win all the titles, Boston. Sorry. Uh, we're about to win another one soon 
Two more yeah, weeks. Yeah, no, Boston. The Celtics always lose. They try to crush the Mavericks. Let's be real. <laughs> That's not happening. It's happening. Um, but every year, I mean, the Devils haven't really been contenders for a while. Always, 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 I root for Canada to win. I don't care what team, Toronto, Calgary, Edmonton, whatever. And um, it looks like Edmonton's about to go to the finals. It's 2-1 in the third, mm. um, but they have a 3-2 lead. So hopefully they can just put Dallas away here. And I will be the biggest Oilers fan, um, especially we can't have Florida win. Uh, Florida mm. teams are winning way too many Stanley Cups lately. I know. It's, it's, it's a hot state. Get, me, get out of here. Connor get McDavid. out of here. All right. Edmonton should win. They should. I agree. We will root for them. Maybe they'll have the Stanley Cup by the next time we record. You never know. All right. That's it. Peace. Good night, Dads. The Dads After Dark Show is part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available. And if you're using Apple or Spotify, please do consider leaving us a five-star review. Pretty please. Find us on threads, Instagram, and TikTok at ndadsafterdark, or you can leave us a voicemail. Check the episode notes for details. Join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in the Dads After Dark show channels. That's where we chat and participate in monthly mayhem contests, game tournaments, and other fun activities. Get access by joining the Nintendo Dads Patreon or by subscribing to their Twitch channel. Check out our Substack at dadsafterdarkshow.substack.com for articles, links to social media, and our merch store. Fancy a t-shirt, perhaps? A big thank you to Family Jewels for our show's theme music. Check out his YouTube channel to hear other awesome Nintendo cover tunes. That's all for now. Good night, dads. Sweet dreams.